We're talking damage here today. What you are about to watch is a compilation of 10 of the strongest loadouts I have ever shown on my channel. Every single video in this compilation has been published. They'll all be linked down below. So if you've already seen any of them, you can skip around with the timestamps and you can get to the different sections that way as well. This is not an exhaustive list. These are not the 10 best loadouts in the game necessarily. If you're trying to farm, this list is useless for you. If you're trying to run a constructor loadout, this list is useless for you, etc., etc. There are a lot of different ways to play and save the world, but today Today, like I said, we're focusing on damage. So I am going to be showing 10 of my favorite loadouts based on their damage count, and I'm going to be excluding different things like the discharger. Obviously, if you go ahead and throw Toy Rockin' out on a discharger loadout, you're gonna shred. I have a triple crit damage wrath video. If you guys want to see any of that, I'm gonna link my fun loadouts video down in the description down below. Obviously, there are 147 videos in this playlist, not all of them can make the cut. I just wanted to show 10 of my favorites. So without further ado, let's get it started with the black metal boom build. This is going to be the first time I showcased my refined build with flash AC in the lead getting things figured out and then the second video I'm going to show in this section is going to be the refined refined version where we didn't just refine the loadout but we refined how we played I showcased the crow's nest strategy where you're locking yourself in place you're not dashing all around the map it's a lot safer it's a lot more consistent and it's a ton of damage this is the strongest loadout I have ever seen we're starting with the strongest and we're going from there so what you're seeing is some on-stream footage of me just checking out this loadout prior to even making this video. I recorded this video on a day when I wasn't even planning on making a video because this loadout is insanely strong. In fact, even in these recordings, I was saying that I don't even think anybody will use another loadout after seeing this. It's it's so ridiculously strong and so ridiculously cheap and ammo efficient to just annihilate smashers like it's nothing that this might seriously be the strongest build I've ever seen. I cannot wait to show you guys the rest of this video. There are going to be a couple of loadouts I'll talk about in a second. And, and uh, yeah, let's get it started. Welcome back to another video of showcasing uh, basically black metal weapons being overpowered part three, I guess. The first of the series was the Dirge Song video. That's where I was shown the power of how stupid these weapons can be with hero ability damage multipliers. Then we showcased the Blackout AR. Yes, that thumbnail has a lot going on. That is a crazy, crazy video. Link to that down below. But today we're going to have two loadouts. Now, the second loadout is absolutely nuts. You you already saw the teaser clip at the beginning of this video. Flash AC means you can get instant reloads with Chaos Agent in support, and it's less damage per boom, but so, so many more booms. It is way, way more powerful than I even thought it would be, and I'm so excited about that. But we're going to be showing two loadouts, and the first one I want to show is a little less high octane, but it's awesome and the the thing that's going on here is as i mentioned in the dirt song video hero ability damage this is 25.4 when supercharged is a huge contributor into a very complicated formula that ultimately results in the booms doing more damage to back up a little bit i want to explain this for new viewers timestamps will be down below if you guys want to skip around but basically the black metal six perk or the one that we'll be using today is when you reload it drops your health by 12 and a half percent and then on the next enemy hit it'll deal 29 to 132 base damage damage based on the percentage of your missing health in a way in a radius it's it's kind of confusing so let me break it down 29 is the least it can do 132 is the most it can do and base damage base damage base damage is uh one factor in a like i said it's that complicated formula where hero ability damage is weighted a lot heavier than some other factors that are in there and uh one of those factors is like the crit damage perk so we'll show that in a second but i got inspired to do a very very weird build Cavs Sin, the guy who runs Ford IDB, set up this page on my behalf. I really appreciate him going to a lot of work that he wasn't planning on doing to put this page up where it shows all of the different classes of heroes that have all the different stages of hero ability damage. And the highest hero ability damage multiplier heroes in the entire game are all listed here. And it turns out if you have an entire build with your commander slot all the way down through your support slots of heroes that are in this top tier, you will do the big booms even if those heroes have no correlation with your weapon at all so you'll see in this build i uh would normally even have some dead perks like if i didn't have dragon scorch in the lead all of these heroes are ninjas and i know that second build has flash ac we'll talk about that later you can skip ahead if you want but that build would have dead perks and it's still doing a lot the one exception i'm making is that first shot rio is here she guarantees the crits that will do very big booms that affects it in a way that is very important and i want to make sure that we are critting every single time but the build just real quick dragon scorch like we did before just because he has that high bonus preemptive strike so that the first time we hit a target it does a lot of damage return to the dragon just so we can have dragon slash i guess fumble because it you know is in that top tier 
here and actually buffs our damage. Tail of the Dragon, because Dragon Slash, and then Dragon Days, because it's in that top tier, and it will kind of help us sometimes. Not a big deal, but the real winner of all of this is the weapon itself. So I said I'd talk about it. Let's get into it now. I am sticking to the Blackout AR, because it does more damage than the Dirge Song. The Dirge Song shoots in nine round bursts, so because this shoots in two round bursts, it's more efficient and it's extremely, extremely cost effective. So because we're shooting twice with this, that's exactly how much first shot Rio shoots, this is the build we'll be going with uh, for the second build. The first build is going to have a reload perk. That's the only difference. We have two crit damage perks, the reload, and then we got the 80% bonus damage instead of the reload perk that we'll be using normally. So I know I got a little confusing there, but we'll be using two different blackout ARs. First build will have reload, second build won't need it. This will be the build that we're using, so let's hop in game and check it out. All right, so making sure I got the right blackout AR, just uh, shoot to prep, and then this is full health, so it won't be as much. This will be that lower range number that I mentioned earlier, but still is going to do quite a bit of damage. And then as my health goes down, you'll just watch that number go higher and higher. One thing I want to say nice and early in this video is that the big boom number that we see sometimes is not always accurate you'll probably see it right here that that number can combine that was not 10 million damage not like on one target okay that was like the group combined so if you're wondering how beast is not you know blowing his lid at 9.8 million on screen it's it's because it it kind of wasn't <laughs> it was that much damage but it was the whole group combined so still a ridiculous amount i mean not only is it high single target damage but look it's just deleting crowds of enemies like it's nothing and my entire perk is like remember dragon days is in this build we have essentially a dragon slash build doing millions of damage so it, it's just fantastic Jeez, I sounded like the kid from South Park for a second there. It's fantastic. Look at that. Damn it. I love it. And I'm really glad that Fumble is one of the higher uh, ability based, uh, hero ability damage heroes in the game because that extra damage makes it so much more powerful. And uh, you'll see in the second build, one of the benefits is that I uh, have less of an issue when I miss my target because you can just reload with the phase shift. This build will do more damage per boom, but it's not as consistent like that. And you can see there, one of the problems is you are very much so a glass cannon. So while this build actually benefits from low health, there is real merit to making sure your health is as low as possible, as much as possible. You do have to be very careful to stay alive. So throughout this gameplay, when the defense begins, I'll probably be using campfires and that's st strictly to just to stay alive i know you don't want it to be too high because then you'll just kind of you know lose all your damage bonuses but you don't want to die so that's also important and either way we destroyed that smasher this is gonna be a long video either way i think we're just gonna start the defense and uh i'll probably find some reason to not actually start the defense yeah no i was right i uh, found a way to get distracted it was funny i saw this uh, the fatties first and i was like wait a second that's usually a smasher in your <laughs> Well, it's not 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 for long. Smashers don't tend to survive this build, but uh, yeah. Storm God says he has an encampment. Then we're going to do that. Then the defense. You know, I got a uh, slight PTSD looking at the encampment I died to. But it looks like Storm God's got a better one. It looks like he's just bullying this encampment. <laughs> Look at the damage. That's my favorite thing. He prepped it perfectly. He got them all in a big group and they died in like two shots. I love it so much. <laughs> All right, the first wave begins. We got some basic defenses down. Honestly, probably not going to need too much with this build. Unless, of course, there are shielders involved. Oh, my goodness. It's not even going to matter. You just walk in and just delete everything. It's a little nerve-wracking to be this close to the enemies because, you know, dying is easy when your health is low. But, yeah, I, not really uh, a too big of a deal when the enemies that are going to kill you just die immediately. It's beautiful. I love I love this build so much. I was talking about this on stream because we were playing around with this build. I didn't even want to record a video today, but I decided that I couldn't not show that second loadout, and I wanted to showcase this uh, this custom build where uh, Capson really messaged me and surprised me when he said that like a full hero ability damage focused loadout is more optimal than like any kind of build that would normally buff the AR damage. So like Ramirez and Sledgehammer, all of that set aside, this build is stronger, and I just couldn't believe it even though i can believe it it's more of like a shocked couldn't believe it you know like i literally can i know what he's talking about but it's just crazy that the math supports that and this is what i was talking about where i am going to need to ride a razor's edge to use this build efficiently and even then i think my health can be a little bit higher so we're gonna get the first of probably many campfires down my teammates are allowing me to have the smashers and i appreciate look at that damn i mean what the hell that is just crazy. I love doing that so much. I'm going to focus on the Smashers, too, because they can take care of them. Oh, yeah, we got the Ben's War Cry hyping us up. 
I think take care of the normal zombies, the smashers are what I want. I also have preemptive strike, uh, as you might remember, so I want to be doing that first shot on them, because uh, it'll do... I don't exactly know, to be completely honest. Beast doesn't know. Like, it's 30% damage, right? But I just mentioned that normal damage perks don't always apply. So I'm not 100% certain what all is going to buff this explosion as efficiently as possible, but I figure there aren't that many team perks in the game that even buff damage damage, like your weapon damage, so preemptive strike is, is good enough. I even showcased that in my previous uh, Black Audi AR video that I already linked down below, so uh, you guys can sh see it showcased there. I think we used Battle Beat in the lead, which was definitely an interesting pick, because Battle Beat is nice and strong, you know, activating Totally Rockin' Out, but we weren't using Totally Rockin' Out. It was uh, definitely a, a different way to go about that. Or, wait, no, that was um, Brawler Luna we were using the... I don't remember which build was which. That was another two-parter video where I think we used Battle Beat and Totally Rockin' Out, but in the first one, we used Preemptive Strike. Maybe it was Preemptive for both. I honestly can't remember. These Smashers are kind of annoying me because they almost die. It's so close to dying in two shots, uh, but it doesn't quite. So I'm essentially three-shotting these Smashers, and I honestly can't believe that the first round of defense is almost over. This goes so fast when you're having fun. Like, it's almost... A, I, I don't know if I left this clip in, but there's a part in the, uh, in, in the second loadout especially last game when I was when I was recording that clip I, I didn't even I don't even know why you wouldn't use these builds all the time like if, if I keep showcasing these they're gonna become more normalized and everybody's just gonna run these builds all, all the time um yeah like as I was saying I we, we were playing around with this before I started recording the official like proper video here and I, uh, I wanted to record some teaser gameplay because I think the intros of these videos are a little too long. I, I don't like talking for four minutes before we get into the fun stuff, but a build like this can be kind of complicated. And if you're not somebody who has seen my previous videos, you're definitely going to appreciate knowing what the hell is going on. And so I decided to record some gameplay outside of my main recording just so I can have that going on instead of the same stuff you're about to rewatch later on. Um, and I've done that before and nobody seems to complain. You guys are awfully nice to me. I really appreciate it because I want to make better videos, but a lot of people just vote with their view where if they don't like the way I did a certain thing, they'll just click off the video and never come back. So I'm always trying to be aware of that and uh, maybe i'm overthinking it if i am just comment down below you like long intros you like to get right back into business you prefer the explanation maybe there's a happy middle ground um opportunity to show some gameplay footage before we get into the fun defenses here is uh probably ideal my point is i recorded some of that and uh that's exactly what i was saying i, I don't know why anybody wouldn't use these builds it's kind of like um the xenobo where the xenobo is as strong as it is and it's almost foolish to not use it because it's just does everything. With a Totally Rock and Outbuild, it has decent enough single target damage to where you don't even need to use a normal weapon. And then, ooh, yes, we have the mini boss. And then I want to make sure I'm not going to be dead here. I don't, I don't want it to be too close to the mini boss because I want my health to be low, but I don't want to be dying. So let's see. This build is surprisingly bad single target. Um, like the damage is high and all, but you can see that there are much better weapons for long-term sustained damage. And that's one of the reasons that that second build really, really, really impressed me. Because I love the fact that you can instantly reload with Phase Shift and Chaos Agent and just get right back to the fight. And by the way, I've been stuttering a lot because every time I hit C on this, it doesn't reload. So, like, every time I stare at the enemy a lot longer than I should have when I should have reloaded, that's, that's what's happening. Every time I hit C to reload... It's not reloading like it normally does, and I don't know what the delay is, but either way, thank you for the help on the mini boss, you guys. We definitely saw what we needed to see, where this build is strong. It's weird. It looks bad because it takes forever on the mini boss, but we're chunking it every single time, and I don't know if it's really bad or if it's just my perspective. Um, I feel like the sustained damage of, like, a Housebuster ground powder, I mention them every single video, but they're fantastic, so, you know, even if you, like, double pot shot, it's still going to go down maybe a little bit quicker, but... The fact that this build is so efficient is something I wanted to talk about, too, because you realize all of this damage is coming from, like, two medium bullets per shot. That's what really does me in. Where, like, this is not a rocket launcher. We're not using energy ammo. We're not using something crazy expensive like that. We don't even have to, like, look for coconuts. There's no setup to this build. You just reload and boom. That's it. That is it. I, I absolutely love that. It's not totally rocking out where you need to activate a team perk. It's just straight damage. Cheap damage, too. And that is what I think is so broken about this build. 
it's not like we had to loot around the map for wafers to get the totally rocking out active it's not like we needed to i don't know farm up a bunch of energy cells to blow them 20 cells at a time look at the atomizer in the video where i was using it with crack shot i burned 7,000 energy cells to do less damage than i think we're doing here today and that really speaks to just how insane this build can be the Blackout AR, the Dirge Song, almost, not every, but almost every weapon with the Black Metal 6 perk has become just immediately overpowered with how these perks are working. And um, yeah, I have become a fan. I can't wait to get to the next loadout because using that has been an absolute treat and it might be like one of my new favorite loadouts. Very similar to the Stormblade build where it's just constant explosions and booming and booming and booming and the Stormblade build has become almost my default loadout whenever I'm running missions just for fun on stream. Twitch link down below and uh, we're going to check that out right now. And for those curious, I did about 6,500 damage. Here are the stats if you're uh, interested in that. All right, moving on to the second build. So the first build was very, very similar. We're just changing a few things around with Flash AC in the lead and Chaos Agent in support. This is one of the most broken builds I think I've ever shown. If you guys remember my old Crack Shot and Scourge build, it is a nuts loadout. It's almost a million DPS without a party. And it's well over that when I have a full squad with high level players like we do have today. And this build, I have not done the math yet. Maybe Editing Beast will take a second look at this, but it's well over. Just eyeballing it, like 3 million damage a second, which is triple what that one was at least as a single party so it's not exactly a comparison that's perfect but it's a ton and we are using flash ac happy holidays and chaos agent to reload instantly as mentioned it's about an instant cooldown it's like three seconds per phase shift it's super super short then we got first shot rio for those guaranteed crits fumble dragon days as we did before and we're definitely going to need fuel for the fallen so i didn't mention this in the previous build but it's a nature zone which is perfect for these fire weapons by the way but it's also meaning we are using a lot of energy spamming phase shift and our enemies are going to be draining our energy definitely going to need fallen love ranger jonesy that's for sure then we got one more change that i wanted to make a note of and that is that we will no longer be needing reload so we'll be switching to our different blackout ar this is going to be adding an 80 percent bonus damage based on our missing health that is going to be awesome let's hop in game and check it out so I'm recording this before we have stuff to shoot at because I really want to dial in just how short that cooldown is. Look at it. We just reload and then boom, they're all dead. And that's kind of one of the benefits of running Flash AC is on top of an instant reload. Look how beautiful it is. You can get around the map super easy and feel for the fallen keeps us nice and stocked up. This build is absolutely nuts. Oh, we got some sleepers just hanging out. Yeah, so this is where I need to be very careful about my health because it gets a little scary when it's this low. There was an enemy behind me, but it doesn't really matter. Oh, look at it. It's nuts. It's so good. I love it. Oh, this might be one of my favorite builds ever. I mean, this is just stupid. I just saved a survivor on accident, and then, unfortunately, that was all I could muster. I couldn't even save myself. Live on, survivor. Do what I couldn't. Oh, thank you. Somebody in chat mentioned not having Flash AC, and I think he's available in like the Chinese New Year set. So I, I don't know if he's worth a voucher, but maybe after watching this video, he is because this is just stupid. Uh, this is just amazing. I know we haven't killed any smashers yet, but oh, we'll, we'll get to that. Oh, Storm God, you handsome devil. What have you got cooking for me over here? Another two-shot encampment? Oh, not quite. The zombies didn't want to play nice. You know what? And that's what I was mentioning in the previous uh, game, too, is where if you miss a shot, you kind of have to stop and reload, and there's that penalty. With this build, you just keep dashing around. There's such a smooth recovery on that. It's, it's beautiful. You can tell I'm even running through my charges just a little too quick, but with that cooldown, it's almost instant. You can essentially infinitely phase shift and it's fantastic that we only needed three heroes to do that or three things to do that between happy holidays flash ac and fuel for the fallen you can commit the rest of your build to the damage that we have here and it, it works great i wasn't sure if i was going to mention this in the video or not but i personally just value running an outlander as well so i mentioned that this might be one of my new favorite builds and the fact that you can just farm passively is great in a showcase like this where my teammates are building the defenses it doesn't get shown as much but i use resources just like an average user probably a lot more than an average user and being able to just casually top off as i go along is super valuable to me so outlanders are definitely something i enjoy maining and that is a huge win for me in this build oh yes we got a nice big encampment right on the spawn all right they're spawning in just gotta shoot phase shift oh and then there you go oh my god all right we got a big encampment all spread out i may or may not have uh phase shifted off the side but we're gonna fuck 
Apparently you can ping a smasher. That's kind of neat, actually. I don't think I've ever seen that used, but uh, our boys are uh, bullying a smasher, so let's just uh, make it not exit. There you go. Hello, crow. Stronger than a smasher confirmed. Oh my god, these things are invincible. My goodness. Oh, best weapon in the game, by the way. Link to that video down below. If you're uh, wondering why I'm building a uh, platform around this encampment, it's because I may or may not have flung myself off the side several times, and uh, I uh, <clears throat> didn't want to do it again. All right, we're back in the action. No big deal. Easy peasy. Oh, I can't stay alive, but look how much damage it does. We're going to get a nice showcase of the uh, new mantling feature, which is not at all new. I think it came out. How long did it come out now? It's still new to me. You know, after years of playing, it's always going to be new. But being able to just get in and out with traps on the base is so good. Casual deletion, casual deletion. This is the best thing. You know, that encampment kind of nerfed me. Heights are a bit of a problem for this build, but uh, being able to just... <laughs> <laughs> Glide side to side while annihilating everything. This is the most free I have ever felt in Save the World ever. I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. So much so that I forget how much damage it's doing to my health. And it's, it's kind of like a vice in that way, but honestly, I'll accept that. If it means I can just delete hordes of enemies with nothing. We put down minimal traps because I told them I don't think we're going to need any more. This is going to be perfectly fine. The big guys aren't even spawning. I think they're just scared. I think the Smashers saw what happened last game, and they just didn't need the embarrassment. I understand. I completely get it. It's, uh, it's the reason I stopped playing basketball at school. And, uh, yeah, I just I just couldn't handle it anymore. Got made fun of, rightfully so. Look at this. Smasher. Dead. Uh, well, <clears throat> dead. There you go. Easy peasy. And that's, again, I mentioned it earlier, but if you make a lot of mistakes, which phase shifting around, uh, you kind of will, the fact that you can recover so easily is nice. And even, like, the other build, if you just miss your shot, the fact that you're not waiting that entire time to reload from scratch again is, is uh, definitely a nice but Ooh, that was a good little kill right there. Wasn't even mine. I'm just appreciating it. There, Smasher, and... No, he's dead. <laughs> I love it! <laughs> Got some enemies grouping up down here. Boom, gone. Smasher. There's one, two, three, and I think the traps will get him. Easy. Like it's nothing. Here's another Smasher. Full health. Uh-huh. And he's gone. That was a 250 power level Smasher! The triple crit damage Wrath is one of the only weapons I can think of that kills a Smasher that fast. Oh, yeah. Ben's Warcry is right. Twitch chat. Link down below. They're having a good time. Uh, like, the Browbeater, two-shot at a Smasher, that was fantastic. There are very few weapons in the game who can compete with this build. And, and this is a Blackout AR. Like, the Black Metal weapons have never gotten much praise from me. Rightfully so. They're really not that incredible. Wow, that was almost instant death. They're not even that incredible, but this six perk is just bananas. Absolutely B-A-N-A-N-A-N. -A -N -A -N -A Okay, so you are, again, a glass cannon. It's uh, nice to have teammates here that are supportive of the video because I, I would die a lot more without them. But it's still just insane. If you can watch your health and not be running around like an animal like I am, I feel like there's a bit of a YouTuber uh, break that I should get because I'm trying to showcase for you guys what this build is capable of. If you were going to use this practically, you'd probably hang out a little bit, maybe not run into instant death as much as I am here. There are smarter ways to use this, but you can see that it's not even necessary. I am just running out of my phase shifts. I am doing it so much. I cannot wait for round two. Round two begins. I love being able to phase shift even when it's not like for a reload because I remember in like other phase shift builds I've had where, you know, you're using a weapon normally and so you have a lot of support perks dedicated to damage. So maybe you can't do it as much as I am right now. You find yourself in a situation where you want to uh, you save it. You know, you're saving it for the reload. But this build is so strong even without support perks. I mean, my commander is Flash AC, for goodness sakes. He's not even a hero that buffs damage. It, that's the crazy part. The hero ability damage from Flash AC is the only reason we're able to, like, use him and, uh, and enjoy his, his phase shift the way that we are today. So the fact that we can just spam that as much as we can just to get around the map on top of reloading is so satisfying. It makes this build really comfortable to use. Obviously, I'm making some mistakes here. I've only used this loadout. This is the second mission I ran it with. And uh, by the way, still not out of medium ammo. That efficiency is nuts. All of this damage coming from... You can kill a power level 250 smasher with six medium bullets? <laughs> Six medium bullets? That's nuts. Oh no, we have a freaking uh, smokescreen mini boss? This is terrible. 
I might run this again just to get a better mini boss. This is the worst. I, oh, Alexa, play Despacito. This is the. Can we get an F in chat, Twitch? Not getting a mini boss to showcase this weapon's power. I am personally so interested in seeing how this weapon performs against the mini boss. Uh, we even see it in the previous in the previous game. But to reload as quickly as this, outputting as much damage as we can, I am very very intrigued to see. How well it can do when you uncap it, you know, with Flash AC, like, how can that uncapped six perk spam perform against a mini boss? That is what I really want to see, but uh, it seems as though this mission will be uh, deprived of it. For those who don't know, uh, smokescreen mini bosses reduce your ranged weapon damage by a ton. I would have been doing next to nothing. Even with this build, it is very, very bad. It decreases it um, by like 70, 90%, something like that, and it's, it's basically pointless to even shoot at. It's like trap vulnerable mini bosses. If you ever see a guy laying into a trap vulnerable mini boss, uh, you, you're, you're welcome to just uh, laugh at him on my behalf. If you guys see a pot shot user laying into it, uh, just put some broadsides down or, you know, wall darts, anything uh, that isn't a, a weapon that's a ranged weapon because it'll do nothing. And uh, yeah, honestly, actually trap vulnerable is any weapon of any kind except for traps. So there is a time and a place for things, and unfortunately today, it didn't line up that way. I can't say the same about, was it the Gravedigger video, where we basically got the same mini boss twice? So, link to that down below if you guys want to uh, not experience this kind of misery. That was perfect. I feel like I'm cashing in that karma, because getting the same mini boss to test, it wasn't literally the same, but effectively the same mini boss for two different builds of the same weapon was so perfect. Um, like, it had slightly different modifiers, but it functioned the exact same. It wasn't tank, it wasn't smokescreen. I'm on the ground again. I don't think anybody's surprised by that. When I say glass cannon, I want to put a little bit of emphasis on the glass. Really more like tinfoil. It's, it's bad. Um, it is so bad, uh, how, how easy you can die. But if you're not standing in their spawns in an acid pool mission on top of beehives like I am, usually you're fine. It's just that I'm kind of playing like an idiot. Like I said earlier, if I wasn't doing a YouTube showcase, I'd be over here, you know? I'm basically the goalkeeper just making sure that no smashers can get through. You could even put, like, two walls just like this. Look at that anti-material charge. And just like this, you can lock down an entire defense. This is probably the much smarter way to do things. Um, you can see, like, the only thing a build like this is concerned about is a smasher or a mini boss. Uh, and, uh, from there, you're just pretty much uh, able to watch everything die to the traps. And this build is so nuts. I'm going to try and find another mini boss in a different mission. Uh, but other than that, I'll, uh, I guess I'll just see you there. So I'm recording this like right over shop reset. And I figured instead of a mini boss kill, we'll just do an extended video because this is just beautiful. I've got tire traps going all the way down this slope. And they're all grouping up down here. And it is so beautiful. We have that dreaded spawn that I think we all have seen before where there we got this big ramp right here. And so I just put tire traps for days. Unfortunately, it is an elevated location and I think we all can remember uh, what happened to me with that situation. So this build does not like elevated areas or death bomb and healing death burst is also pretty brutal. So this is a hostile, hostile mission, but I think I'm okay. I'm just going to keep phase shifting around. Nothing's going to be able to touch me. Look at the damage. <laughs> Oh my god, even the death burst just cannot stop this build. Oh, gotta get away from the death bomb. There's like a certain amount of tact that is needed to not be eliminated from this this area. This is scary. I just keep uh, pushing myself against the back ramp and apparently going up the ramp backwards. Ugh. Just trying to activate my ability without dying. And I think we're doing a pretty good job, seeing as I'm somehow not dead yet. Look at all the death bombs! This place is hell. This is just hard to survive. Oh my goodness, I don't want to die. <laughs> oh, I don't know. This is kind of weird. It's like it's weirdly casual as like a bonus extension to the video where I, I even thought about this earlier and I'm sure some viewers were thinking the same thing. We're like, wait, you're going to run an entire mission to get a mini boss, but you're not going to like, not going to like show us the journey. And you know, I, I can agree with that confusion. So here I am. Although it would be absolutely heartbreaking if we don't get a mini boss this time that's like compatible with this weapon. That would be like worst case scenario, but I'm not going to think about that right now. I'm not going to think about that right now. I will talk about questions that should have been answered earlier in the video, but somebody in the Twitch chat asked why I don't use the black drum, uh, AR, uh, not black, yeah, the black drum shotgun instead of uh, the uh, AR here. So I would explain why I didn't use the dirge song earlier in the video. Uh, I think, oh my God, I think I did. Yeah. And, uh, the black, the shotgun doesn't have the range that this weapon has. 
and is a little inaccurate. I haven't used that weapon uh, taking advantage of this six perk. That definitely needs to be its own video on the channel at some point. But, oh man, I forgot how low my health always is. But like, I'm not sure if that would be ideal for taking advantage of this build. Especially with Flash AC when you're running all over the map, dashing constantly. It's probably just better, safer maybe to keep an AR that can uh, get some good range. And I think this has been the uh, correct choice. It'd be embarrassing if I had as much fun as I did without using the optimal weapon for it. But yeah, little tip for uh, retrieve the data, by the way, for those who don't know. This is actually, by the way, a really, really no, another tip <laughs> is to stay back here nice and safe. Somebody chat also recommended this exact play style, and uh, I honestly can't fight it. I think for the YouTube video, it was better for me to be running around showing you guys all up in the fight, but this is the much safer way to do things, so that's definitely how I should use it. But the tip I was gonna get to earlier is that uh, the mini boss in Retrieve the Data is typically after round 10. Archer said that one day and I was like, bullshit, uh, and then it spawned after round 10, so. I feel like I intuitively knew that. Like, I've always been vaguely aware, like in uh, Cat 4's, Category 4 Atlas missions, the mini boss tends to spawn around the two and a half minute mark. Like, I kind of just have come to expect that without really specifically knowing it. So, uh, yeah, there you go. If you guys ever want to be ready for a mini boss, it's uh, wave 10. So we're at round 7 now, about to be 8. And that's just something to be vaguely aware of, that the mini boss that we've been running this mission entirely for will be joining us shortly. Look at these guys. All these tire traps. They can't even get up the hill. I love it. Actually, that's what made me want to record is when I saw a bunch of enemies grouped up and I wanted to just delete them all at once. This is the beauty of the AR. Sniping from that distance is so good. I'm gonna wait just a few seconds here looking at that 3500 health down the bottom left not exactly where I want to be There we go. Yeah, there we go So it lowers your health by 12 and a half percent when you activate the six perk and that amount is a percent So it'll take you less and less health up until you're about to die And I don't honestly know if the team perk can kill you. I guess we'll find out right now uh, You can see it's going less and less so down to 4,000 I'm personally curious. I don't think I've ever seen it kill me. Oh, is that like a floor? No, it... Okay. That's interesting. Yeah, it didn't go down. 3,100 is still where I'm at. Okay, 2,100. It's like, it's really trying very hard to not kill me. I'm down to 1,000. Shooting. Down to 800. <laughs> it's like sometimes it doesn't even activate. It's like the six perk doesn't want to kill me. 500. So, if, uh... Fortnite didn't round to the nearest integers, you'd probably get in a situation where it would never kill you. It would infinitely keep you lower and lower. Where the hell did I just go? Lower and lower and lower without ever actually killing you. But eventually it does need to do at least one tick of damage. Scout, the entire reason we ran this mission was so I could have the mini boss. Oh my God, I dashed off the map in frustration. All right, here we go. Party time. Why are you still shooting the mini boss? Please let me have this. Here we go. I want to see what this is capable of. And I'm dead because I ran into the storm. Yeah, that's probably what's going to happen. There are going to be acid pools everywhere. This mini boss is just doing everything it can to kill me. And this is not at all the showcase that I wanted, but I'm just kind of dealing with the cards I'm, I'm, I'm dealt here, all right? Oh my god, it's just rushing me into the... The vortex is pulling me into the bombs and making sure that I'm dead. This is... Honestly, just sad and that's kind of a proper limiter of this build like I I've been talking about how overpowered it is And yet here I am struggling to kill a mini boss because well, you know, a build just can't do everything But look at that damage. Okay, so that's what was doing me in earlier is I was face shifting and getting vortex pulled at the exact same time So it was putting me in this weird position that I was not prepared to be in and I don't know how to deal with this I feel like I was gonna put down campfires, but I'm dead already. This is tough I mean, even with all of this struggle and the teammates letting me have this, it's uh, honestly doing well enough. I mean, you can see it's chunk. Oh my goodness, chunking for like really good damage, and uh, doing better, doing better than I think a lot of loadouts would have in that position. I am so sorry that that was absolutely brutal. I'd love to get a better Smasher clip, but life does move on, and I can't let this video be an hour long. I uh, unfortunately won't be able to show you better, but if you guys ever want to see this build, run it yourself or, you know, come by in the stream. I mean, there are lots of ways to enjoy this power, and uh, I don't think we specifically need to see a mini boss because enough 250 power level smashers have been annihilated from existence for one video. So uh, I think we could all tell exactly how strong this is. I'm doing, oh, I was going to say, surprisingly less, and then I realized that my health is full. Yeah, that's why I don't put down the campfires. If you were wondering, like, bees, you're dying to the mini boss, why don't you do it? I was wondering the same thing. That's why I put the campfires down, but I'm being reminded of it with you that uh yeah that high health is very bad because that explosion damage that we're exploiting here is 
giving us that damage because of our health being low. And that's an incredibly important part of it. Uh, oh, phase shift is being so hard to control. Flingers are being deleted. I love this build so freaking much. And with the mission just about over, I'm going to let you guys know that I appreciate you watching. If you guys want to recommend anything, comments are down there. Subscribe if you're new. I really do appreciate it. We're at like 106,000 on YouTube as a recording. So making that number go higher is always something that makes me smile. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next one. And uh, yeah, take it easy. Whoa. I'm back after over a month to show you a loadout that I actually first talked about a few months ago. You're seeing gameplay on screen of me melting smashers, I have no doubt. Editing beasts is on it, I'm sure. This build is literally the strongest loadout I have ever seen. And in today's video, I have a feature on how to make it better. If you want the history of this build and you want to learn more about it, I'll actually recommend that previous video. I still think it's worth watching. There is kind of a series of steps that led to what we're seeing today. So I'm going to gloss over a lot of the mechanics behind it. I highly suggest the recent videos on that down in the description that'll get into it further but basically the basic gist without getting any further into it is that hero ability damage buffs the explosion of the black metal six perk so let's talk about what that means i've actually supercharged my blackout ar since then every time you reload which you can do with chaos agent we'll get to that triggers an explosion that does 29 base damage to 132 based on how low your health is so if your if your health is very very low and you dash and reload with chaos agent or reload normally you'll do a ton of damage millions and in this build, we're running double crit damage because we have first shot Rio and we've got that 80% because bonus damage is nice. It's also fire and we'll be recording in the nature zone today, no doubt. So let's go over the build real quick. Happy holidays is for phase shift. Phase shift is for chaos agent so we can reload instantly. Then we got first shot Rio just to make sure we crit fumble because it's got that high ability damage and it is something that can kind of help us. We're really scrapped for uh, really strapped for different options there. Fuel for the fallen is because we're going to need a lot of energy and assault crit damage because we are going to be critting a lot and this is a little bit more useful than some of the alternatives so with that said let's hop in game and show what i've got now this is sort of how the build works this is very high up so i'm probably gonna kill myself on accident but you can see basically you just dash shoot dash and then you just kill everything as you go it is so powerful also big shout out to slow speed because i'm recording this on stream at a very time at a very bad time for viewers so i don't actually have a full lobby this is the first time i've ever done pubs but he's actually in the stream, so he's helping me get some of the bigger targets so we can really showcase this build in it, all of its glory. You see, for example, these basic zombies are just ridiculously underpowered for this weapon. Nothing stands any chance against it, so if we don't have a smash or a miss monster to shoot at, it's almost no point in even talking about it. Now, speaking of bigger targets, some fatties are good too, but you see, just one hit, one hit... <laughs> everything just dies with such ease this is honestly my favorite loadout in the entire game and the reason that i haven't talked about it for many months is because we went through a period of a mutant storm which essentially means we had one element for two and a half months straight and that element was water now the black metal weapons can only be fire or physical and so this weapon doesn't really need to do full damage to be optimal but like it was still just not a good time to use this loadout. So now that we got nature or even fire seasons back in town, I'm pretty excited about it. And this loadout can actually stand to lose 33% of its damage. So if you wanted to use this in a fire zone, uh, fire versus fire, that would actually be perfectly fine. This build is going to do tons of damage no matter what. You're going to be absolutely fine. I have no worries about that. So, because I record these on stream, Twitch link down below, I get helpful prompts like being asked if this weapon can be fluxed. And that's actually a recent change. I believe the black metal weapons were voucher only very recently. Even if I was wrong, a lot of weapons just became fluxible. Uh, because now, if any weapon is available in a llama, it no longer requires a weapon voucher. I actually made a brand new weapon voucher video. Link to that in the description down below. Super good video. I think I did a much better job on the second try. So, if you're somebody who is still a little uncertain about their weapon vouchers, that video is a great resource and the black metal weapons no longer need vouchers or at least the black metal ar doesn't you can get this weapon for flux and weapon designs which as you can see the absolute astonishing power of this build is far stronger than even some of the launchers in the game and uh yeah i think two medium bullets per millions of damage is certainly worth a weapon uh, a weapon voucher let alone flux which is cheaper than a voucher uh, in my opinion because every venture season where you typically get a weapon voucher you also get 100 flux people kind of ignore that and it's very easy to get weapon designs a lot of people just forget that you can open up a bunch of llamas 
recycle all the weapons and get plenty of tickets. Now, this event in particular, as of recording, is a pretty bad one because there is no event mode. I mean, you get war games, but we don't have Frost Knight or dungeons to farm tickets. So maybe my maybe I can concede my point on that front. But in general, when those events come around, you can farm up lots and lots of weapon designs super easily. And I'm pretty sure I've got like seven or eight thousand tickets this season anyway without really trying much. Quests give you a lot of tickets. My point is, this weapon is much more obtainable now. So if you ever wanted to try this loadout out of season, as I am recording this video months and months after this weapon normally comes around, uh, you can actually build this for uh, relative ease. And I think that voucher applies to a lot of the hero heroes as well. So I think Flash AC should be flexible. I actually don't even know. Maybe Editing Beast can check for me but either way good change accessible build i'm probably going to cut to when the defense begins so we can uh, show off some more meaty high damage numbers you know all right, this is uh, a little before the defense begins, but that's because I want to do some setup. I want to show you the reason I'm recording this video, and it is called the Crow's Nest. So if you look at the map, I don't actually know exactly where the spawns are going to be, but that's all right. I can actually oh, apparently find out right now. So we're going to have some spawns over here. This is the new innovation. Basically, you can make a nice small platform. Now, this has actually gone under some renovations where uh, this used to be very big, but look at this. All you can do is just dash into these corners, or all you have to do rather. And this will allow you to dash and dash and dash. And I'll be getting a lot more energy as I'm getting kills, so don't worry about me running out right now. You can just use this to re-up your ability while staying relatively still, and you can just snipe. Look at the range on this weapon. Look at that damage. That was a fatty! That was a fatty! And now chrome husks are a thing too. The randoms in my lobby have started the mission. That's perfectly fine because I can demonstrate this right now. Look at how insanely usable this is. I can actually line up and hit these targets with so much convenience and i'm trying to make sure that i hit an enemy here because uh that is where i'm going to get fuel for the fall and you can see in the bottom left i'm getting a lot more energy now look at how convenient this is i'm waiting for him to get cloaked so we can snipe that perfect this is a huge upgrade to this build in fact like i said it went under some renovations because this is what i used to do i used to do like maybe one or two you can just sort of edit the walls like this you know you can pre-edit and make it set up pretty easily this gives you a lot more range and this is just a concept you know you don't need to do the little one you can do a nice big one by one you can do a two by two and if you're ever running out of health i don't believe dashing like this can kill you see i'm at eleven thousand, but you can easily put a campfire just off to the side because you don't want to be healing constantly you just want to not be dead now lobbers can also be a huge problem for this build and so that's something to consider but you can see it's a lot better than what i'm doing right now where i'm sort of dashing around i'm wasting time running to sort of realign my aim and still i'm doing plenty of damage because right now i'm fairly safe but <gasps> we're getting the mini boss the mini boss that is long awaited i remember when i first recorded this video it was over 30 minutes long i think i was 34 minutes long i'm trying to remember because i couldn't find a smasher mini boss that was like worth shooting at and i'm running out of energy of course because i didn't put down any traps and uh that's thanks to my teammate i promise i wasn't wow one hp in a dream i wasn't trying to be lazy i just uh well, they, they trapped for me, so yeah. And uh, you can see the mini boss went down pretty easily because my teammates were on it. But uh, that is so much damage versus a nature mini boss too. Look at this! I can just get right back up in my crow's nest. Now, as I was saying before, the mini boss lobbers can be a problem, and they will destroy these little crow's nests. So it's worth it to upgrade these. You can put anti-air traps around you. Again, my teammates and pubs right now are amazing. Um, the campfire is really good too, just to stay alive, just out of range. And I recommended this in the past, or I was going to recommend this before I I simplified the build down to this little corner you can build a nice little two by two just sort of putting it all the way around here then a campfire can just be healing one corner because you can see i'm going to be doing a lot less damage like that smasher would have died a lot sooner if i uh had been a lower hp lower hp is the key you want to be low hp you just don't want to be dead so a campfire can be really nice if you're dealing with enemies that are hitting you with fire or i mean look at this chrome husk two hitting a chrome husk like it's nothing and this is a fire weapon after all so it'll actually keep a chrome husk down chrome husk being pretty much only killable on uh, fire and water elements, I believe. Yeah, nature is where they stay alive. You can just snipe. You can just snipe. The range on this weapon is super good. There's a smasher just get inside my little crow's nest. There you go. And then my teammates are going to finish him off. Get some energy back. Knock out the mist monster. This build... 
Oh, I wish I would have recorded it the first time I used it when we came back to the season, when it was no longer water and I could use it again. I was literally giggling. Now, I'm only 23, but I think that's enough of an age to say that I am a grown man giggling like a little girl just out of the excitement of this build. It was so much damage. And uh, my teammates on stream were no doubt pulling out this loadout as well. And if you get two, look at that, two Mist Monsters almost entirely in one shot. There's a Smasher. Oh, oh, he survived, but my teammates got him. So, like, to have a whole team of people using this build is so much damage. Look at that. Look at that damage. He survives with one HP. Basically, two hitting a Smasher. If you can hit a headshot in there, uh, I'm pretty sure you die a little sooner. And there is damage drop off on my initial bullets. And that explosion does not have a drop off. That's why I'm basically sniping here. It's so much damage. So little E. Uh, so little damage. Uh, so much E. I'm just getting too excited over my own words. And I thought I had an adrenaline rush. But that's basically the updated version of this build that I wanted to show. It's the same loadout as before. But with the new strategy, the Crow's Nest. That is definitely the strongest way to do it. In full transparency, the strategy was recommended to me and discovered... Uh, a long time ago but as mentioned we went through a snowstorm for two and a half months in game so i really couldn't demonstrate this to its full effect so yeah on that note though i don't think i'm done using this build so we're gonna queue up another one of these missions and uh just hop right back in all right back in another game got a smash on a roof and you know how this goes just one two it's dead and uh, his teammates over here aren't really too big of a problem although they've made me a nice little uh crow's nest on their own so uh i appreciate the help yeah oh one of my favorite things about this build normally a bubbled shielder and a nice little nurse combo would be annoying but uh two shots that's that's all it takes and everything Everything is just dead? This build. Oh, I love it. I'm just gonna rave about this build the whole time. I mean, that is what the video is about, is it not? Oh, look at that! We just got a nice smasher hanging around. Let's see, one shot, and he's dead. <laughs> he never even got to do damage. It's actually kind of tough. If you guys have noticed that this video is a bit shorter than usual, yes, we're in the with the bomb, and the defense is only four minutes long, but also, this build kills everything so fast that my clips are are very short. It's uh, it's a shorter view, a shorter YouTube video, but certainly is a good problem to have when you're dealing with something this freaking strong. Easy cleanup. I love it so much. Thank you, Reflexes. So again, we don't have a full lobby going into this. So a lot of the people in the public game are actually from the stream, Twitch link down below, and uh, they've been super useful. Like, I. <sighs> I, I don't know. I was scared of pubs. I know I'm, I have a different experience as a streamer, but uh, I always feel like teammates that are good should be appreciated. We only ever get screenshots of the dumbass placing broadside shooting off into nothing, but more often than not, I would like to think that people actually help in missions. If you guys ever have bad teammates in pubs, I mean, our Discord is linked down below. You have a much higher chance of finding useful people in there, so it's worth a little plug, you know, Discord link down below. All right, I was going to set up this defense on camera real quick, but you know I can't skip an opportunity to bully a smasher. And like I said, this video, if I didn't keep talking after the kill, would be like 10 seconds long. These kills are so fast. Let's go set up this Ah! My teammates are starting without me. Okay, this is getting a lot more exciting than I expected. So, real quick, there's the defense over there. Okay, the lobbers are throwing stuff. That's going to be a problem. Let's build out of nature and then block it off. Build it just like ooh, that. And then we can do anti-airs, but I can't do the anti-airs because they're not giving it to me because my inventory is too full. Let's just do a bunch of them so that we don't have any problem. Oh, yeah, Ben's War Cry. Thank you for the stream, Redeem. Let's go over here, do this, take away that little piece. I should have pre-edited my build and now I'm dead. I appreciate my helpful teammates. You know, reflexes will revive me. You know, Durley will revive me as well, but uh, <laughs> they start the mission without me being ready. So I'm doing metal here because nature enemies shouldn't be getting up this high, but even with all this chaos, it just shows how easy this is to set up. You can build a crow's nest anywhere. And it's funny how different this video is going to be because I waited many weeks between figuring out the crow's nest and actually showing it in video. Donna, welcome. She's in our call as well. And... I in the time that it, I, I wasted not recording my video, I simplified it. So now this little corner wall or corner build is what I tend to prefer. And it's a lot more convenient. So yeah, there's the chain of bad mini bosses continuing. You know, we had a good one. We had a good one last game, but this one's going to be a bit more annoying. So let's do this. Let's prep the build in advance so I don't spend all my time doing that and just like that you're good to go one shotting miss monsters like it's nothing this is so beautiful to knock down a smasher like that with relative ease is so satisfying it's one of my favorite things to do in this entire game this build 
is so good. And my teammates are uh, struggling here with my <laughs> with my build. Putting walls above me and everything. That's all right, though. It seems like I got visibility over here. And this build is so universal. It's great. Let's take out this masher. Let's do this. Go through the acid pools, trying to avoid it slightly. Uh, I can't really help much on the mini boss, but I can help on these big targets because you can do damage before they even hurt you. I'm trying to take a, a nice good of attention for my energy. I'm at 86 health, which in a game like Save the World in the end game where I am is insanely low. And I'm so used to the crack shot builds that I, I forget that I, I can go on without, you know, like I'm trying to not switch off my weapon because crack shot has taught me as much link to the crack shot videos down below by the way um i don't know if i'll plug them on screen but link to them down below either way uh the crack shot builds basically build up tons and tons of damage and then if you switch off your weapon you lose it all but in this build you can just switch as much as you want all you gotta do is make sure to reload before firing again and it's a very versatile build look at me paying back my teammates uh one of them at least i was i was thinking earlier that that defender was a teammate it is not actually but this is my favorite thing you know i i talk about how much damage this build does but at the the whole time i have failed to mention the obvious fact that it's range damage as well like it's area of effect you are not only doing millions and millions of damage but you're doing it into a crowd of enemy enemies all at once so anything within range of that explosion dies. And it's a pretty good, I think, 0.75 tiles. That's easy to check, actually. Let me just pull up my weapon. Hopefully don't die while I'm checking. It is 0.75. There you go. So pretty good distance, actually. It's almost a full tile, and it's one and a half across. So centered on that enemy, you just shoot in the middle of a crowd, and you'll hit everything for equal damage. So even if there's a smasher in the crowd, you might want to prioritize shooting at a smaller target, just like I'm about to do here. Uh, it looks like the smasher is actually the center. And then everything just dies! <laughs> And it looks like the damage drop off for this weapon does happen at this range, but the explosion still does full. So it's just ludicrously strong. One of my favorite builds. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm starting the outro a little early because we got about 20 seconds left in this mission. So I know that I skipped over a lot of the specific science, but as mentioned, this is sort of a multi-part series. We started with the Dirge song being amazing. Then I showed a build with the Blackout AR. Then I showed a build with like the Flash AC refined Blackout AR, I think. Yeah, I did. Uh, that's the order of operations and so there are quite a few videos in this series and that's why i figured i'd save a bit of time but uh yeah this is definitely a strategy that i recommend utilizing i know i hopped down from my crow's nest this entire mission but uh i didn't have a lot of time to set up so now hopefully you guys can get the idea and uh forgive me for that thank you so much for watching twitching down below subscribe if you're new i'll see you in the next one and uh yeah take it easy this next section is the crack shot and scourge pairing the storm king scourge is a weapon that does not have to reload and it's packing tons of damage all at once i'm gonna let the videos explain it but we're gonna showcase two here the first one being the first time i ever showcased it and the second one it was actually after they added movement to save the world yes we didn't always have the ability to combat sprint or crouch or crouch slide or mantle all of that got featured here and none of it removes a crack shot buff so i had a great time I'm also going to use this opportunity to share some math that it never actually made it properly into a video where I conclusively showcase that Crackshot is the better commander doing 906,000 DPS with my build at the time versus 865,000 with Sledgehammer in the lead. For those of you who aren't a nerd, you might have no idea what I'm talking about, but basically Sledge is better if you're constantly switching off and building and then Crackshot's better if you just want to keep your gun out and do 4% more damage. I think Sledgehammer is more malleable, but Crackshot does more damage so we're showcasing him all right this is believe it or not one of my favorite loadouts ever uh i'm not even kidding this is one of my like relax and chill loadouts and i'm surprised it's only ever been shown on my channel once if you guys remember in my five super fun loadouts video which you should totally check out i made two of them link to those down below i Hello. featured i it, well, it's true i featured a crack shot and scourge combo loadout this loadout is complete dps i have wafers on here i'm gonna switch that to fumble because the idea is that with crack shot and the scourge you never have to stop to reload and i paired it with totally rocking out because why not uh you could i guess do like I, I don't actually know can the i don't think the scourge can have triple crit damage if it can that's absolutely mind-blowing it cannot that's good because this weapon would be nuts with that however this is just a regular scourge build in my opinion it's pretty standard all damage and as long as you don't let it overheat you can get the max stacks from crack shot and bullets from jonesy and support and it is a really really strong build um so yeah we're gonna be messing around with that in this video and it's gonna be some of the highest damage output you might ever see in this game because it's a really really strong combo all right let's see let's see 
All right, warming up against the Smasher. I killed one fatty already. We're gonna take care of the Ride Husky. Not even max stack. Distance, damage drop off. Pretty good, pretty good. I think once we get warmed up and once we get multiple targets, it might do more. Multiple targets is tricky because healing death burst is gonna get in our way, but uh, that's just a taste of what's to come. All right, we're just gonna clean up this area to show you guys what this loadout is capable of. Nurses, by the way, easy peasy. Strongest they are in the game, plus I think one of the highest damaging loadouts. I mean, one of the is easy and it's kind of a cop out. I don't know if it's the highest damage output because totally rocking out plus crack shot might not be better than sledgehammer plus totally rocking out, but it's still just a ludicrous amount of damage. And I have to be very careful to avoid enemies because I don't, uh, don't have a lot of heal. Oh my God. Don't have a lot of healing in this build. So I have to play it a little safe, but my enemies are just running away. So we're just going to cut to the defense here. And I have an idea for that. All right, so I don't always show the building in these videos, but this time around, I have a unique idea. Uh, because this build is basically all damage, the only healing in this entire thing is totally rocking out, and my enemies are healing death burst, I'm going to be building myself a little bit of a platform, just a nice little ring for me to stand on. Uh, I'm going to put down a few just healing pads, and then I'll put uh, campfires in the corners since those burn out. I'll put those after the defense starts, but I'm going to make myself a nice little killing floor. Um, the ramps were intended for me to have something to shoot at, and I guess I can stand in the middle and sort of work with that, but ultimately... I'm gonna have the enemies come to me. So if we fail this mission, it's probably because of insufficient trapping. That's entirely my fault, but uh, I'm gonna set it up so that the enemies are flowing in a nice, easy, shootable pattern. And I'll show you what that looks like once we get it set up. All right, we're gonna be doing a build somewhat similar to what I've done before, but this is a mostly not trapped, just a lot of stalling builds. I am putting enough confidence in this little watchtower up here that I should, me and the teammates combined, be able to do everything here. Base is gonna go down in the middle, Popcorn's got it taken care of, and basically we're just gonna start off with the uh, first enemies first. Now, down here on the south side, the ceiling electric fields are just thinning the herd. They're taking out a lot of the basic baby zombies, and it's gonna help activate, oh my god, look at the damage. It's gonna help activate Totally Rockin' Out, and I'm not gonna be able to kill anything. I'm gonna ask my teammates, they can hear me on the stream right now, to kill anything that gets close enough to the base, but you can kind of see how this build just deletes stuff. For those of you who might not know, the Scourge has one of the highest range uh, of any AR. It's actually four or 5,120. Yeah, see, in my brain, 4,000 is a long range, but the Scourge actually has about 5,000. So the damage drop off, like I mentioned earlier with the Smasher, isn't <laughs> that damage, isn't actually as prevalent as you might think. This is a max stack, totally rocking out active build here. This is just... It's so good. I really enjoy running this build. Um, I would have put the campfires down, but I haven't even needed them. And with the healing pads around me, I don't think I will. This is more than enough damage. Um, of course, there are going to be stragglers, but my teammates or even ceiling electric fields are really good at taking care of that. If you ever wanted to solo 160s without trapping or stalling, this is honestly probably a viable way. Um, just making yourself a nice little watchtower, sloping it the way I did, and giving yourself tons of easy area to shoot at. It is one of my favorite loadouts in the game. I don't have a favorite because different loadouts suit different moods. You know, I have favorite melee loadouts that I really can't compare to my favorite base loadouts, favorite farming loadouts. If I'm just looking to screw around and do a redonkulous amount of damage, this is one of the builds I always go to. And I'm, I, I gotta make sure every time I get red to not let it overheat, it's so satisfying. Even a flinger, look at that. With the damage drop off being nearly non-existent, you can actually do some really good damage to environmental structures and look at that flinger, so far away. Took care of them like it's nothing. Like it's nothing. And if, of course, if I miss any uh, teammates, uh, be sure to take out flingers. Although, honestly, with a build like this, a kind of defensive build, where instead of running around, I'm sort of saying, yeah, come to me. Uh, let me at them. Um, I'm not really nervous about flingers, because they're just going to be throwing enemies in an area where I am well defended here. So, yeah. Uh, we're open on the southwest, you guys, if you want to put up some walls. I don't think it's strictly necessary right now, but something to watch out for for sure super good super oh my god it's so much damage this weapon plus totally rocking out already running double crit damage uh it's 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 just so much it's so good so good i want to get some smashers coming um 
we can take care of them, that would be really satisfying. I believe the best way to use the Scourge here as well uh, is probably switching off between two targets like that. Ah, oh, I overheated! No! That means we need to start over with the crack shot. You can see uh, the crack shot bonuses. You can see how much less it does. But yeah, once they're confined like that, it essentially forces them to walk into a tube where that expanding ring of damage that you get from the Scourge, that explosion, is... Oh, here we go. Smashers incoming. Look at the hell! Look at... Ah, I overheated. I got too excited. That's okay. Um, it already does a ton of damage. It's totally rocking out. So crack shot isn't totally necessary, and it builds up really easily. As long as you don't reload or stop to build. That's why we don't have wafers. I know I'm not even getting fumble right now. Look at that. Stopped on the Ice King. Thank you, Poplio, for running that. Uh, is Poplio in the Twitch chat, but popcorn in the game. Oh, that damage. When you do more than the uh, healing death burst, you know you're doing something right. Oh, don't overheat. Oh, that was close. Stopped him just shy of the base again. I think there's another smasher down there that I can't reach, and I can't edit that because there are same electric fields. Two smashes at once. Uh, one at a time is probably ideal. I know switching off, you get more damage of the Scourge, but uh, the healing down first. Did that overheat? Oh, come on. I stopped. I totally stopped early. Can we get a ref on that? This is, this is, this is, this isn't fair. Oh, somebody popped a war cry. I didn't even know we had a war cry. I also asked my teammates to let me have the mini boss. So if it's not, if it's not trap durability, or durability, not trap vulnerable, we should, uh, we should be seeing some crazy numbers on that. Uh, we're back to spawning over here in the northeast, which is honestly pretty easy. I put all of these floor freeze facing the correct direction, so none of them are going to get anywhere. It's going to be pretty easy cleanup over there. Lots of basic zombies. They die to this build very comfortably. It's uh, not even that big of a deal. I'm hoping for a mini boss soon or some more sm Look at that. Nurses. They can't even... Oh, these are the throwing thoughts, not nurses. Uh, throwing thoughts and healing hose is, of course, the uh, the proper lingo for these these char these characters, but not gonna be a problem because they get taken out just far too easily. There we go, our mini boss, building blocker fire. Let's see how much damage you can do from just back here. Let him get closer and closer. I need totally rocking out to be active for this to be super useful, but I think we're gonna have a good time. So let me shoot down here. Maybe I can get battle beat kicked in. There we go. All right, battle beat's active. How much damage can we do? Uh, doing pretty good. Honestly, Coco45 killed a little faster. I don't know. I think I'm, uh, I think I'm Team Coco45 on this one. But I don't even have Totally Rockin' Out active right now, I don't believe. No, I don't. So, with that active, this would be doing so much more. Uh, the enemies just aren't spawning where I have traps down, so... It's still... I... <laughs> That would have been much faster with totally rocking out, but it, it doesn't it doesn't even matter. It's, it's so satisfying. Thank you teammates for letting me have that, but soloing a mini he has killed my cone! Ugh! I have a cone to get up here and he destroyed it every time. Well, that will make it tricky to get up. I have to kill my Oh, shoot, I didn't even know that. Uh well. I uh that that renovation was made without my knowledge. I apologize. <laughs> We just got to get our stacks back, but honestly, it doesn't really matter. Once the mini boss is out of the way and the smashers have always already come and gone, assuming we don't get some smasher waves, we should be completely fine. The uh, enemies are really spread out on this defense right now, and they're not really too much of a threat. So, yeah, just taking out the mist monsters is perfect because the uh, extra damage you get from the scourge is really capable of taking out those enemies. I mean, that explosion damage just has great area of effect. The damage itself is super strong to take out the big targets. In all honesty, I feel like they've built pretty much the perfect AR here. You don't even need to reload. You just kind of stop shooting every once in a while, which is similar to reloading, but you're not stuck to it. So if you want to run it into overheating, you can, but the amount of time you stop, like, look at that. If I run it all the way red, it's like one, two, three, and that whole time you can start shooting again. So if you want to, like, reload only a few shots, basically, that's basically, if you shoot it like I just did, you just wait a little bit, you're kind of just waiting half a second, getting 10 of your bullets, and then shooting again. It's like if you were reloading a Bobcat, which has a 50 round mag, and then just stopping 10 bullets in to resume combat. That's what you can do with these weapons that have a, a heating capacity. So it's similar to stopping to reload, but much more versatile. And if you're on top of it, it's significantly more effective. But of course, it makes it um, something you have to really consider because you're always watching that bar. That bar, if it gets red and it overheats, I have 50 shots to fire before I'm back up to max damage, and that could waste a little bit of ammo. That's why I welcome the flingers right there. Um, 
but it's it's not too big of a deal. Just something to keep on top of. Ah, I wanted to dare the flinger to shoot me, but I killed it too fast. Let me see it. There we go. I'm basically an anti-air. Thank you for the war cry, by the way. Oh, I wish I would have had that during the mini boss. So good, so good. Definitely my favorite build um, to use casually. I don't know if it's my favorite build overall. I, I don't know, I go back and forth. My favorite weapons, they change all the time, but either way, you should try this loadout because it's insane. Also, went through about two and a half thousand uh, energy cells this game. Not too bad. Thank you guys so much for watching. Comment what you want to see down below, and I'll see you in the next one. So, as I'm recording this, there have been new movement changes to Fortnite Save the World, which is uh, funny, because I had a lot of these 160 videos kind of prepped for the channel already, so uh, that's going to be weird for a while. But I wanted to revisit one of my favorite loadouts. Now, I still want to revisit this video uh, again, because I did a lot of math, and I'm not going to be getting into that today. But basically, it's combining the Storm King Scourge, which I can't change, because we uh, already started the mission, and Crack Shot, plus totally rocking out and all the fun stuff. The math that I did was finding out that Sludge hammer is not more damage in the lead crack shot is in fact the boy you want and that's interesting enough for a video and i'm gonna get back to that at some point but uh, so if i just say this video this this loadout might be the most dps because in a solo like nobody else buffing me it's like 960,000 dps when you're in a group with a lot of people buffing you i think it gets up to like 1.6 or 1.7 million dps uh and then it like with a war cry it's well over like 2.4 it's, it's a ton it's a ton but what happens is because you're just stacking crack shot, you can't switch your gun, you can't build, you can't do any of that. However, with the new mantling, with the new combat, you know, tactical sprinting, you might not have to do that nearly as much as you otherwise would have. So, I, I'm seriously worried. So, I really wanted to give that a try. And this could be very, very powerful because we looked at the numbers. According to a Reddit chart, uh, apparently tactical sprinting is, <clears throat> let me see the uh, tiles per second, 1.48 tiles per second compared to the Baron, which is uh, 1.47. So, that might be them eyeballing it. Either way, we did an in-game speed test, and we might do this again because Matteo wants to try it out. Um, it seems to be identical, so it's pretty cool. Right? You know, functionally identical. The difference between 0 0.01 tiles per second is never going to be seen in-game. But this is essentially the idea. I'll be able to run this. I'll be able to stack it up. My sound has been resetting to zero constantly. And instead of switching off, so let me actually see. Does the number go up to 26,000 to 30,000? Sweet. So if I sprint, does this does this remove my buff oh it doesn't so i absolutely can just tactical sprint around you know mantle over different buildings i can really interact with my environment without having to build while maintaining this insane damage buff i'll fix the sound in a sec i'm seriously worried it's gonna be great so you guys can see it's still forty-four thousand. my damage is getting higher and higher that's sort of the uh the best part of this build and it's forty-three thousand. so yeah i can absolutely just get around the map without resetting this that is so so good by the way when i pick up a football these are the numbers so 69 percent crit chance nice really really insane loadout this thing absolutely gets insane in fact let me just go right here fix that sound i'm thinking 25 percent will be good for today's video and now we could actually hear the glorious power of this build i'm gonna see how far i can get around obviously i'm gonna have to like build the defense if i'm gonna help the team a little bit but little stuff like this getting up super high shooting an enemy running away you can really traverse the map and save the world because many Many of, what, many of the obstacles in our way are one tile high, and this change is just, it's crazy. It's so good. Obviously, if you want to go long distance, you're going to want to switch to the Baron. Like right now, no combat's really serious. I can just switch and combat sprint away, but for the most part, this is going to be a much, much, much more versatile build, and this also is really, really great for constructors. That's not what I'm featuring today, but it's a, an amazing change for them as well, because constructors have to get up and down their builds, and being able to mantle is so useful that's gonna be so good like you'll be, you'll be able to put up a couple of walls and then just jump over it uh, without having to edit it and screw up a bunch of stuff it's it's so nice and uh, i can't wait to try it out more all right i know we've uh, already seen the power of this little but you know you can't be running a build like this and ignore a, a smasher so we're just gonna get around nice and quick because of the tactical sprinting take out his minions charging it up and it's so good it's so good mind you not even, not even utilizing Totally Rocking Out for that kill. Like, it wasn't even active yet. It's so, so satisfying. This is my favorite build in the entire game. I've said it's almost my favorite in the past, but I think I'm going to commit. If I'm going to pick a favorite, this is it. And, uh, yeah. Like, right now, for a second, my instincts had me switching to my Baron. Uh, obviously, that would be better and more infinite, and it would have a cooldown, but the fact that you don't necessarily have to really opens up a lot of doors.
I didn't even mention this in my video yet, but you can, um, you can, here, I'll do it with these enemies down here. You can sprint, slide, and keep shooting. Oh, and if you sprint slide, you can see under the water. Oh, you know, there's nothing oh, yeah. down there. It's just dry. Weird. But it's nice. I like it. I'm not complaining. You're saying it's weird to see me actually interested in what's going on for once? It's true, though. Yeah, it, I mean, this actually, really... Kind of, it actually is kind of weird to see you excited for This adds an element that I haven't been able to play with at all. Like, I only ever get this on BR. Oh, wow. What is this spawn down here? There's a little mineshaft situation going on here. You know what I wanted to do? I should announce this in a video. I don't know. All right, I'm going to say it. I've been wanting to go through, like, the mic. Oh, I can crouch under here. Look at this atlas down here. You can... Oh, you can crouch through it! That's so nice to be able to defend this! Oh, and you can just run right up with a ramp! That's gonna be so convenient! And I'm gonna just hold it down. Hold down my... Oh, uh, uh, you're blocking me. Okay. I thought it was bugged, but I didn't see you. That's so convenient. I mean, obviously, if you want to get over, you should just mantle over the top! Oh, this is so good. This is such a basic update, but it makes so much of a difference. You can actually slide, too. Oh, if you're really in a pinch... Oh yeah, it's a little little specific, but kind of works. Yeah. There's so many fatties here. Turns out the scourge, if you switch between targets, you do a lot more damage. Oh, this is so good. Oh yeah, I'm gonna have to start not ignoring animals soon when Fenix comes out. All right, I should probably start putting traps down. Huh? I'm having too much fun just running around. This is gonna get normal so fast, and I'm I'm ready. This is what I was going to mention, because when you're sprinting, you're allowed to change weapons, but your weapons doesn't actually pull out. So if you click the Baron, right, if you click onto the Baron and then switch back to your Scourge before your sprint runs out, does the stack stay? Okay, let me see. Let me see. I'm going to shoot a bunch of bullets, just, you know, pissing away my energy cells. I'm going to lose my mouse on a monitor that doesn't exist. 36,000. I switch, use my Baron, switch back. It does. It does totally reset it. I'm glad that didn't work because I feel like the extra mental check of switching to your Baron and then consciously trying not to reset your buff would be a lot to keep track of in the middle of a fight. Uh, I'm a little, little happy that didn't work because that would have complicated things more than I would have preferred. Yeah. I'm using gas today. I'm feeling gassy, Ty. What do you feel about that? I like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No confusion on that answer. <laughs> and then you can just hold it down while you sprint through. I'm gonna waste so many builds with this feature. Like, it's honestly, it's absent-minded. You just, like, hold down. For me, it's middle-clicking my mouse. You just hold down your upgrade button, and then it's just, like, it's easy. You don't even have to think about which builds you upgrade. You just kind of just hold down your middle-click, and then everything just sort of gets maxed as you go. <laughs> this is so bad. I'm gonna have to start farming. Uh, okay. Let's just do this. I'll make Archer... Uh, tear up with joy and just use some tire traps. Look at this. I can mantle up over here, get to where I need to be, and it just, it's, oh! your create Your creativity is the only limit when it comes to, like, little changes like this. Like, how much you choose to utilize mantling and combat, sprinting and all that is... Yo. Is what? Fixed animals. What they do you mean? They don't trigger traps anymore. Oh. Uh, if, you, if you have them tamed. Nah, you oh, tamed an animal? Fun. Archer, you're weird. Alright. This should kill everything like if this doesn't stop everything from getting up over this then oh my god i can just mantle over my traps i don't have to like edit or build or oh it's so convenient this whole video is just me gushing about the new changes oh yeah let's get it going this is the first time a mission's been started early where i just didn't care like honestly i'm ready we, we've been over trapping like crazy all right so this is my plan no baron combat sprint wherever i need to be get the scourge stacked up i might even be a one-man trap tunnel down here Ty, do you want to get tire traps over here? Yeah. If you're still next to me. Or Mateo. Goodbye, Mateo. I can't oh, right over here. So. What do you need? Well, something here to stop the horde. Oh my gosh. I know that the movement has nothing to do with what I'm doing here, but just holding down everything is, is great. So good. Oh, there's a smasher. Look, I'm going to sprint over to it without using my Baron. So good. <laughs> Did it die? <laughs> How about all the marathon bull rush characters affect tactical sprint? Nobody uses those heroes anyway. Not serious players who know what they're doing. Sorry, noobs. If you've ever ran a, a marathon 
constructor, uh, like Bull Rush or but it Marathon Penny. They're they're not that good. It's it's not. It's not that. It's not what you want. Wait, if yeah, like what you're saying, if you're sprinting and then uses Bull Rush, like I wonder if you're running faster with a Bull Rush now. Uh, Bull Rush is, I think, <laughs> I think Bull, Bull Rush is literally blacklisted from the. From the I, 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 unless Ty has it. I do have Bull Rush. Have what? I do have Bull Rush. Can you sprint uh, and then use your um, Bull Rush? Yeah, try to use, try to use Bull Rush while sprinting. It looks like oh it just replaced the sprint. God, I think it does count. We had opposite uh, reactions to that. Oh, it was pretty fast from my point of view. I'll do it from All right, do a normal Bull Rush. Oh, yeah, the cooldown on Bull Rush. Today we learn and get reminded why Bull Rush is a trash ability. So about three-ish tiles. Oh, a tree was blocking my view and I got to crouch. Okay, and then we'll see when you sprint. Start up back, yeah, sprint. Start Have you guys up. noticed if crouching reduces your bloom? It should. I don't know. Slight effect, but it does affect Bull Rush. We ran three tiles. Oh my it. gosh, crouching totally does. Ah, ah. I don't know. The spread totally feels tighter when I'm crouching. What do you think, chat? Stream dropping frames? Yeah, apparently it was very laggy. I was so distracted by the gameplay. I hope I didn't just record a shitty video. This is so good. I didn't think about crouching reducing bloom. This is huge. Oh, see. Oh, imagine weapons like hacksaw or something. See, 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 see. Like high bloom weapon. I'm actually curious. I, I cannot go over to see if, if, if we lose uh, a. Ty had it. Here, I got you. Oh man, this loadout. I get to just traverse the map with comfort and it just stays fully stacked. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. Alright, let me have the mini boss. Straight beam. Without crowd beam? Oh my gosh. Man, Total Rock and Out's not getting activated by any of my traps. I'm gonna walk the mini boss over to the enemy. Oh, or, or that will not help oh, me. You know what? Let me try the wrap. The wraith. The wraith, I mean. This loadout should be more than capable of soloing the mini boss, but without Totally Rocking Out, I'm doing like probably a million less DPS. And I'm dead. Bound to happen. FPS is dead. That might be on your guys' side because I can see OBS and it, it looks great. So. Okay, yeah, crouching 100% reduces. Uh, the Scourge yeah. is a very accurate weapon, so I, I'm sure my testing isn't strictly... Hey, you know what? I'll try the Viper. The Viper is an absolute bullet hose. Let me give that a shot. Or many, okay, many, the, many shots. The... Alright, Viper. It actually caps out its spread almost right away. Eh, it did the same thing, crouched. Hmm, it's kind of difficult to tell. Maybe the Axon? Oh my god! I don't know if crouching makes a difference. It's hard to tell for some weapons. It, yeah, I think it's internet. Off. I'm gonna kill the stream and try again. Oh, I won't even start the stream. Well, either way, I guess we got 30 seconds left to close out this video, if the recording even worked. The new movement is awesome. This is great. To be able to use a build like this with out having to stop and switch off all the time is fantastic. Um, <laughs> this is amazing. The uh, mini boss did not get annihilated as much as I'd hoped, but obviously without uh, totally rocking out, that um, it's gonna be a problem. Here I am trying to start a stream and or end a recording at the same time. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna cut this probably 10 seconds early. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, new update is awesome, and uh, it won't also be featured in many of my upcoming uploads. So yeah, <laughs> look forward to that.
This next section is all about bows. This is where I found out that Rabbit Raider is way better than Stoneheart Farah. She has been the queen of bows for years. I even have a bow loadout video I'm going to link down below if you guys want to see all the different recommendations for the best ways to run bows. Zenith is also featured in that video. He is not shown here today because he's great at stalling and freezing enemies, not necessarily doing tons of damage all at once. Rabbit Raider is what you want for damage with bows. These videos are going to be the Xenon bow and the Vacuum 2 bow featuring double crit damage copies and regular perks. It's a ridiculous amount of damage, especially the vacuum tube bow. You're definitely going to want some popcorn for this one because these bows are incredibly strong. It is currently hailing in April. So this is the sister video to my vacuum tube bow video. Link to that down below where we went ahead and ran it double crit damage with Rabbit Raider Jonesy. Rabbit Raider Jonesy is available in the event shop. He'll be here until June 21st at shop reset. So like 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is when he goes away and uh, he ups your crit damage by 225 percent. And with the vacuum tube bow video, that was extremely good for crowd clearing. Let's do the other favorite bow in the game, the Xenon bow. This will bring us to a 570 percent crit damage, which is so much. That is so much. We are giving up our reload perk. So this will be a two loadout video where it's the same loadout for both parts. But in the second part, I'm going to run a reload perk on it. This is the standard perk loadout that I usually recommend. And I did find it to be a little bit better with the vacuum tube bow. But I still want to see big damage with the crits. And on that note, I do want to say I'm running this Sunbeam for a reason. Uh, in recent history, as of recording this, I did make a video on Brightcore versus Sunbeam on the Xenon bow. And I found that Brightcore is kind of better. I would recommend you watch the video if you guys want to see the full story, but in this video, I want to do as much damage as possible, whether or not it's practical, so we're just going to be running Sunbeam for both of these copies, so uh, yeah. Here's the loadout. Rabbit Raider in the lead, of course. He's the name of the game. That's the theme of the video. Totally rocking out because, of course, Battle Beat War Cry. I record these on Twitch, so link down below if you ever want to be a part of the madness. Subwafers because I want to make sure I can crit in the early game. Might not come into play a lot because we're in a tropical zone. Not a lot of metal there. Locked and reloaded because we're reloading every shot, of course cupid's arrow because i uh might have forgotten she existed for a while before recording this but that's okay she's in the build now because we want to get just a little bit of extra bow damage and then quick scope of course because it's a sniper let's get into the game and try this out all right our first victims are just standing around no idea what's gonna holy crap it's like a meteor went through the crowd of enemy nothing is safe nothing is safe holy crap everything is just die oh and there's an encampment over there as well Oh my lord, that did so much. This is actually very strong. You know, I think mathematically, somebody told me this, I didn't double check it, but I think it's worth, int it's interesting and worth thinking about that. Apparently double crit damage is actually a higher damage per second over reload. I, I just feel like resetting your shot when you miss and moving on to the next target is a lot more valuable with reload. Of course, I'm not critting as much as I should be here. Oh, never mind. Uh, totally rocket out, got activated. I think what, oh my God, I one shot a miss monster. I think what happened it was uh, something died from affliction and then that activated things. But if we can crit, probably gonna die in one shot. That is so much for a weapon that goes through targets infinitely like that that is a ridiculous amount this isn't even one of the higher damaging bows and it's still one-shotting everything all right so if we've been one-shotting blasters then takers are yeah just easy prey and then that chains out to just kill everything <laughs> oh my god this is the power of the xenon bow like this is known to everybody it's literally the most popular weapon in the game like there are five mythic weapons in this game and the xenon bow is still more popular and well i mean this is why Okay, so I said earlier that the Xenon Bow is not the hardest hitting bow in the game. It's actually quite low, but double crit damage with my stacked party. I mean, yeah, still doing plenty of damage. Didn't crit on that second shot, but yeah, absolutely plenty of damage. Nice little Ben's War Cry coming in to take out a Smasher. Easy headshot on the... Ah, oh, I was hoping. I was hoping we could get a crit. Nothing to it. All right, defense begins. Now, we have minimal traps down because it's the Xenon bow. I mean, I don't think we're going to need exactly too much help. I can just stand back, totally rocking out active, and I feel like once the ball's rolling, once I have totally rocking out active and I'm just eliminating crowds of enemies, uh, there's probably not going to be too much downtime for me. And there's a smasher. Let's see, what can I do to a 250 power level smasher? Of course, not a substantial amount of damage again i am recording this fresh after recording the vacuum tubo video so that's a weapon that can pretty much two shot a smasher but it doesn't even matter i'm just shooting through targets i'm shooting through walls i'm standing here safely the projectile on this weapon is super fat you don't even really need to hit your target you just shoot generally close and then it dies and it looks like a smasher that's softened up and non-elemental is going down relatively easy assuming i'm critting on this it'll go down easily but yeah i'm surprisingly not critting that often 
I've got Totally Rockin' Out active, and I'm standing on a boom base. What on earth is my crit chance right now? 68%? Okay, I guess I'm just the unluckiest Xenon Bow user right now, but I should be critting a lot more than, than is being demonstrated. This is, again, an argument where the, uh, the, the reload perk might be a lot better. That'll give me a lot more opportunities to crit, but as mentioned in the first part of this video, we're doing double crit damage. You know, how hard can a Xenon Bow hit? Now, okay, I guess if we were really going for that, I would take off the reload on on this but I can't I just can't do that I have to be a little bit practical you know I I still think uh, fire rate really really helps on a bow did I say reload earlier fire rate lets you draw back a little bit quicker it's super nice to just get shots off faster and easier I like the difference where the time difference where when I click my mouse and I want to aim the time between being able to shoot my target and not you know between fire rate and no fire rate is substantial it's 42 percent and being able to click and shoot 42% faster is just too important to me. So I guess if we were trying to do as much damage as possible per hit, I probably should have thrown a damage perk on this. But, you know, I think it's fine. It's not a big deal. These videos are just for fun. And if you guys wanted a, an interesting way to play, if you're somebody like me who has only ever used Stoneheart Farah and never really thought twice, you might want to consider using Ravarator because if you're a newer player, you might not realize he's in the shop, might want to pick him up. Maybe you've only ever used him in support. Throw him in the lead with Totally Rocking Out and you might be impressed because like, look at this. We have minimal traps. Yeah, we have kind of a, a high level team. We're all in the 130s, 140s, um, but we almost have no traps. We have one small tunnel over here that granted is not getting a lot of attention. And then I just put down a few, a few electric fields. There was hardly any thought put into it i put the electric fields down over where the enemies might be coming through and that's it and it's pretty much completely locked down just me and my teammates hanging out back here emoting <laughs> are doing all that is needed to defend this entire objective even with smashers earlier it wasn't making a difference oh no a flinger okay he's dead oh no there's enemies over here okay got him <laughs> it's so casual it's so much damage i love it oh no a flinger i hear him where is he? I actually don't know. Oh, 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 it looks like I see him right there. And he's dead. <laughs> One shot! One shot and he's taken out. Oh, man. Chats and having a good time. Because um, I don't know if I mentioned this video. Maybe I did. But I, uh, I was sick for about a week. I didn't stream for a long time. So today's recording is taking place on kind of a reunion stream. And I'm, I'm really happy about it. Because I've been kind of motivated. I've been covering dungeon loadouts again. Shouts to my carbide video. My flash AC video. Link to those down below. I think the minigun video might be out by the time this is released. I don't know. Either way. If it, if it is out, I'll, I'll plug it down below. If it's not out, then stay tuned for more. I got videos coming out every three days for the foreseeable future I, I think i'm scheduled like a month or two in advance so if you guys uh want some content there's plenty on the way and the reason i'm stating that is because i've been so motivated by dungeons and all these you know new heroes and well not new but you know weapons and heroes coming back this season that I, I wanted to record and then i spent a week nursing a sickness that prevented me from recording so i'm just coming back strong i'm, I'm having a good time and uh this weapon is just kicking ass unfortunately there's not a lot of variety in this gameplay so i'm gonna actually cut here and tune in when we see the mini boss on wave 10. All right, we've got a mini boss. I have had so many bad mini bosses in my videos. Okay, look at that. <laughs> a mini boss that's not smokescreen. It's not trap vulnerable. Oh yes, Ben's war guy. It's not ricochet. I could actually shoot it. So as I've mentioned now three times in this video, the Xenon Bow is one of the lower single target damage bows in the game. And that is being demonstrated even with my wafer is being activated here. We're not doing a ton. Two million damage slowly being fired is not the most impressive amount of damage, but that's okay. With the amount of damage this weapon does in crowd clearing, it is probably still an overpowered target. You can see, you see that in the background? I'm not even shooting at the mini boss. Did you guys realize that? I'm locking down that tunnel back there. I'm just shooting through a mini boss to do it. While I'm talking about this weapon being overpowered, I'm proving exactly how overpowered it is in the process. So yeah, I think this weapon is more than strong enough. If it can't handle a mini boss on its own, that's perfectly fine. But uh, yeah, like I said, the footage is very repetitive. So I'm going to cut to the next game where we try out a reload copy to uh, switch things up a little bit. Before we move on to the next build, though, 14,000 damage with the second blaze being 4,100. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the Xenon Bow for you. I will say my teammates were, of course, letting me get some damage in, but the fact that the weapon's even capable of that speaks enough. All right, same exact loadout as before. We just got a reload perk on there instead of a second crit damage. Now, I'm not exactly one who typically cares about survivors, but when I got a, a Xenon Bow on hand, 
It's just enjoyable. I mean, look at this. Oh no, there's a giant crowd of enemies all attacking a survivor. What am I to do? Oh, never mind. They're all dead. Got them taken care of. No big deal. Then, of course, with the reload perk, I can react to a lot of the enemies spawning super quick. Of course, without that reload perk, we're hitting harder, but shooting so slow that this survivor might have died if I was using my double crit damage copy. So, yeah, if I was saying earlier why I think this is a more practical way to go, that's part of why. Look at that. Dead before he even has a chance to attack. Of course, I'm getting help from a teammate, but look at that. With that reload, we're able to react to them spawning live in real time, and it's a really, really effective way to go. And uh, I think the survivor is probably good for somebody's daily. I don't know. Maybe it'll give me ammo that helps because I've been burning through energy. You needed it, Archer? Yeah, it's, I have the 50 survivors. Oh, you poor thing. Well, I'm happy to help then. All right, so... Uh, again, no crit damage, uh, second crit damage, but single target. We're going to be resetting our, our damage quite a bit, and honestly, I don't know if that time to kill was faster or slower than a normal one. That felt pretty good. All right, let's up the ante. Let's activate a smasher so I can see the health bar. Then we're going to come over here. We're going to activate the encampment. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And I don't want to die in the storm, so we're going to wait for everything to spawn in because that'll break my builds. Then we're going to put down a campfire or two. Uh-huh take out the big target because he might be a problem. I was trying to kill the smasher and the targets at the same time, but I think I got a little greedy with my campfires. Doesn't really seem to matter because they went down with no problem, and I, I don't know what happened to that smasher. He seems to be gone. Hello, giant block. All right, since I didn't kill the smasher in the last clip, I figure I might as well... Wait, this is another smasher. Why are we getting so many smashers this time around? I wanted that for the double crit damage part of this video. I wanted to go kill that nature one because it was so unsatisfying to leave it alive. Let's go see if we can track it down. There he is. Just took a nap. Here, even from all the way over here, just shoot him. Oh, did we miss? How do we miss? Can't miss with the Xenon bow. The projectile's too big. Okay, come on. Give me a couple crits here. A couple of crits. There we go. There's one. And Affliction will do the job. There we go. We got him. We got him, guys. Don't worry. All right. The game begins. So... In typical Xenon fashion, I've got, like, minimal traps down. I don't think we'll be relying on crits too much, as this is, you know, a reload build, so we'll be firing quite often, and the Xenon bow gets enough crowd clearing to do exactly that. Just activate Battle Beat with ease, and, uh, I'm going to try to avoid standing still and just leashing, unleashing the, Z the Xenon bow. Or I guess loosing is what you would say with a bow. Uh, ooh, I learned that from Game of Thrones, but I... I love this weapon. It's just so... Easy. Uh, you just stand back. You can be behind a wall, safe and sound if you want. And you just it just goes through everything. It's the pierce, man. It's the pierce, bro. You don't even need high damage. You just go through everything. It's like earlier, if you can kill a, a mini boss and a crowd of targets, you don't really need to be doing that much damage per shot. It doesn't even matter anymore. If you need single target damage, just keep like the discharger on hand or something. There's nothing over here that could even get close. Oh no, our enemy's getting close. Let me shoot them through the wall. Where are these targets? I see them on the nearby, and somebody's wolf is going after them. Taking them out. Who put all these traps down? Who who thought we would need that? That wasn't you, Archer, was it? No? Okay, probably not. Right. Actually, no, I'm deaf and I realized. Yeah, so sometimes when I record on the stream, my voice channel has a lot of people in it, and uh, it's, you know... It, it's give and take. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's, it's a lot of people, and... Uh, you gotta pick your battles. So I have Deafen for this one, but uh, yeah, Iwari's in here. She's gonna chat with her afterwards, so. Yeah, as of recording, Iwari's the one who helps me edit my videos. Um, she's been helping a lot with the, the recording. I do all the plugs and stuff like that, but she's been helping on the, on the A-roll side of things, as we say. And she's been doing a stream that's going on like 500 hours and has like 500 more hours to go. Something like that. It's ridiculous. And we were talking about how she's running out of things to stream, which is insane to me. I... I can't do that. You know, even when I didn't have, like, more of a personal life, I, uh, I met a lady over a year ago now, and, um, like an actual year ago, not like 900 days ago, I mean like an actual year ago, and, um, spending time with her is, is an important reason to end a stream once in a while, so I, I don't, I don't get to do these streamathons that her and Maddie will get up to. Maddie is another streamer friend of ours, if you don't know anything about my friends in the community, they're just streamers who stream for stupid amounts of time. Um, like, Maddie went for like two weeks one time, and I just can't. I just can't compete with that. I don't know how you do it. I used to stream 10 hours a day every day, I did that for a little while, but... That was back when I played Battle Royale, you know, that's something I can totally do, uh, or used to be able to do, but... 
that's just tough. That's just tough. Nowadays, it's quite the opposite. Um, as of recording this, you know, my, my recent schedule before being sick was like once a week, which is not a lot, <laughs> but when it comes to save the world, I, I got 10 160s and ventures. So unless I'm like recording fun loadouts and having a good time with that, there's not a lot for me to do in this game. So streaming more than like literally once a week is really hard for me because if I streamed more than that, I'd finish ventures and then I would stream less than once a week. So I have to like regulate everything and it gets complicated. So yeah, you know, I'm just playing a game where people ask me how I play this game so much. And the answer, the honest answer is I don't. You know, as an end game player who's been at it for a lot of years, as you can imagine, there isn't a lot of in the way of progression. There's not a lot for me to do in this game. And I, I genuinely have fun with these loadouts. I love pull it, putting on Rabbit Raider Jonesy, recommending that you guys get him from the shop, pulling out the Xenon bow and showcasing some awesome damage. I really have fun with this stuff. But... I record my videos usually in like one big session. That's why you guys will see me wear like the same shirt over the course of five videos in a row because I record them all in one sitting because, you know, these are live recordings, so it doesn't take a ton of production. But uh, because of that, I, I end up knocking it all out in one session and then I don't I don't play every day. I, I don't. People ask me how I play so much and I'm like, I, I don't. A funny thing that happened while I was sick was regular scheduled videos that were created and scheduled before I was sick went live and people were like super happy to see that I was back and I was like what <laughs> I feel like crap what do you mean I'm back oh right new video went out <laughs> so that happened a few times um and uh, I just realized I've been running rabbit raider for the vacuum tubo video and half of the xenombo video and I haven't popped my war cry once but I haven't really needed it I don't like to rely on war cry the cooldown is way too long I probably should have used it for the mini boss that's my bad but it's just like <sighs> It doesn't do anything extra. Like, look, I shoot a little faster and I do a lot more damage. That's great. But I didn't really need to shoot faster or do more damage. I'm already keeping just about everything at bay. We have a few edge cases getting through the defenses, but my teammates and traps are more than enough to handle that. So we're just chilling out here. We're just knocking everything out. And um, normally I'd make a cut here, but we're going to have a mini boss uh, on wave 10. That's a nice little tip for anybody who plays this game. Uh, retrieve the data missions with the balloon. The uh, mini boss is on wave 10, almost to the dot. So there's a good one. Now, now that I mention it, I probably should have saved my war cry for this guy, but that's eh, fine. This is a weaker mini boss than we had before. I'm gonna have to heal. Um, so he's not gonna take nearly as many shots. As long as I can get totally rocking out active. I know battle beat activated right before I ate that wafer, kind of a waste. If I can shoot behind the mini boss and hit the other enemies, I might be able to regularly activate battle beat. See, like, look at that. If I can just sort of aim it up so I'm hitting the mini boss in the head and the enemies behind him and taking damage because I'm looking behind the mini boss and not at him, then instead of doing more damage, I can be dead. This is, uh, this is five brain tactics right here. Look at that. I didn't even hit the target. The projectile size on the Xenon bow is so stupid. They have made this weapon difficult to miss. Like, it's not even easy to use. It's, it's difficult to misuse, <laughs> which is, you know, kind of the same thing, but ridiculous amount of damage either way. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Got a big crowd of enemies, activating battle beat, smash her in front of me. Not doing a ton of damage per crit, but that reload is making up for it. Just getting it going and going and going, and everything is just dead. Not only are we doing regular outputting uh, damage, but we're also uh, hitting him with impact, which is staggering him and giving us more time to hit him overall. Really solid deal. Oh no, a smasher. Fun fact, or not really fun fact. If you guys have ever shot into a wall like this and wondered why your projectile doesn't go straight through, it's because it can actually deflect the uh, the projectile. If you like aim into a rock or something close up, sometimes your projectile will actually curve and not go straight through it, which is why the Xenon Bow is sometimes a little dumb. Uh, it's important to stand a little bit away from the back of a wall just so that you don't have it arc and go off into a different direction that is not the enemy you're shooting at. So if you're ever wondering why I back up a bit when I'm shooting straight through a wall, that's actually why. So uh, yeah. You know, I have t completely changed my mind. For some reason, I was like, a Stoneheart Fair, a purist, and I really loved being a ninja, and I felt like that's what it meant to be a bow user. But after recording this video and the vacuum tube bow video, and I still have to do the powder keg video, so I don't know when that video is going to go out. If the powder keg is available, that video should be live. If the video is not live and the powder keg is out, the video should be following soon, because I, I have intentions to record that video as well. 
I have found out through this process that Rabbit Raider is a really fantastic commander. Totally rocking out plus Rabbit Raider is just the most damage a bow can do, and it is so satisfying. Might as well use these wafers. I'm not going to use them all anyway. So much damage, and yeah, I have to kind of keep my legs planted. I can't really enjoy the mobility of a, of a ninja, but who needs it? Who needs it? You don't really need mobility on a bow that can shoot through walls. So you just sort of hang back, kill things as normal, and it's super easy. Barely an inconvenience. So, wow. Rabberator has absolutely impressed. Thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe if you're new. Twitch link down below if you ever want to be a part of these recordings. I will see you in the next one. And uh, enjoy. Take, enjoy the rest of your day. T take, it e take it easy. Oh, and in typical fashion, did 13,500 with this weapon, which is just insane. All right, well, we got a fun video today. So, Rabbit Raider Jonesy is in the shop. He basically makes it so snipers crit for 225% more damage. It's a substantial bonus. One of the things in the game that is called a sniper is the uh, class called bows. They are not their own class. They're all still technically sniper rifles. So, I figured since he's in the shop, bows are some of the strongest, most fun weapons in the game, I would do a nice little two-part series. This is going to be two loadouts today showcasing the vacuum 2 bow and i also of course want to showcase the xenon bow which i just covered recently in my bright core is better xenon bow video it actually kind of is on that topic though i am going to be sticking to sunbeam today because triple crit damage is kind of a theme on my channel i've made lots of videos depending on who edits this or how much energy it wants to be put in i might plug a, a triple crit damage video on screen i don't know link to all those down below either way my point is the theme of this is just to crit as hard as possible do as much damage as possible so even if I made a whole video on it, there might be something to talk about with Brightcore kind of sort of being better than Sunbeam for bows. I'm going to be sticking to Sunbeam for this video because I just want to crit as hard as possible. So in part one of this video, in the first loadout I want to show, we're going to do double crit damage with this loadout right here. Rabbit Raider in the lead, of course. That's the whole thing we're doing here today. Totally rocking out, of course, because we're going to want to crit as much as possible. Battle Beat, of course, because of course. And Subwafers. I don't typically like Subwafers on bows because as soon as you eat the thing and switch back, I mean, it's not the best thing to be going back and forth, but I'm using this for like the initial startup. I'm using this for the first part of the video when I don't have a bunch of traps down. Once the defense begins, Battle Beat and Sealing Electric Fields should be all that we need to keep it active. Plus the Vacuum 2 Bow, plus Pharaoh and Support is going to chain to a ton of targets and absolutely take things out. Uh, locked and reloaded because we're reloading all the time. Quick scope because sniper damage, of course. And uh, yeah, I want to say on that, for a practical build, Typically, I would not recommend what we're doing here today. I, I don't know yet. Obviously, when we hop in game, I'll see for sure. But I feel like this build might not make a ton of sense because to run double crit damage, we are sacrificing our reload perk, which could suck. But I, I want to see. I want to see. We're going to put that reload perk back on for the second part of this video. As for now, let's see how much we can do with double crit damage. All right. I got some wafers. We got a little, little mimic here. All right. Pop them. Here we go. Pull it back. What? Did we not crit? Oh, uh, oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, we got him on the, on the second shot. We also got an encampment over here. Three million damage? I don't know what I was expecting, but that's plenty. I like that. Oh, where are all the big targets? Come on. Come on. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, fun fact, I wanted to share this, but it didn't fit in naturally in the video. It's, and this part doesn't even fit in naturally either. But I uh, I was looking at the loadout for this video. I had survivalist initially because I didn't know what else to put. I forgot Farah existed for just entirely too long. It was an absolute disgrace. So if you guys ever want to see that kind of thing happen live, then uh, Twitch link down below. Again, fire rate isn't great without the reload perk, but it's really, really good damage. God dang. So really strong weapons are kind of hard to record YouTube videos for because they just sort of one shot targets. Uh, <laughs> super satisfying, but <laughs> not, not much else to show. Man, today is just tropical zones only, which makes it really hard to get away from. Oh, no, 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 don't charge. Ooh, got him, got him. Okay, all right. Yeah, that reduced damage from him being nature is not too good, but honestly, did not slow him down much. That, or did not slow me down much. That smash just went down with ease. I am loving this build so much. This is so much damage. All right, because I'm running out of wafers, let's see. Can we just get a lo oh. Oh, well, that's the Vacuum 2 Bow and Farah working for you. You just kind of hit one target, everything just kind of dies. Then Battle Beat's active, can kill an encampment. Oh, the Snowball is rolling now. Where are these targets? I see them on my mini-map, but they're not spawning. All right, let's pick one target just like that. Activate Battle Beat, knock out the Mist Monster, activate Battle Beat again. Uh-oh, no chain, uh-oh, oh, no, no. Lucky crit, please. All right, well, he didn't need a crit anymore. He was already low enough. Take out the Wolf, fail to hit the Wolf because the hitbox... What? 
What is that projectile sight? Are you kidding me? No! No! So, for those of you who've seen my elements video, you would know that nature on nature or any matching element is gonna do 67%. Uh, oh. <laughs> so, it's gonna do a little bit reduced damage, but it's not really gonna change anything. In fact, that reminds me of the breakpoint topic from my breakcore video, where even though we're doing a million less damage, even if we're doing 3 million and then 3 million, we're still two shotting the smasher by doing 2 million and then 2 million. So, it almost doesn't even matter. Although it does matter. All right, got the defense mostly trapped up. This looks like a mess, but we're basically just making corridors for the enemies to come through. I've got steel electric fields down just to activate battle beat. I'm gonna shoot at everything. Sometimes I like to go for big <laughs> targets in these videos, but the crowd clearing and single target damage of the vacuum tube bow is just unparalleled because it does, as you saw earlier, between two and three million damage, depending on their element, to a single target when it crits but then it chains to every other target, assuming you can actually hit a shot. It's so good, it's so <laughs> much damage. So yeah, that's my recommendation. If you were watching this video to try and decide if you should pick up uh, Rabbit Raider Jonesy, I recommend it. Uh, maybe not always in the lead, even though I'm trying not to recommend this build because it's not necessarily practical. You can't really ignore the sheer quantity of damage I'm outputting. Like, I am basically the trap tunnel right now. So, maybe I uh, stuck my foot in my mouth there. You know what? I'm happy to be wrong. If this is the amount of damage I'm outputting, like, if you consider the crits and the chains, every single time I release this drawstring into a group of enemies, I am doing millions, plural, of damage. Probably tens of millions of damage to all the different enemies all at once. Between Farah and the chain lightning damage and the lucky crits like that. Huh. <sighs> It's so good, it's so good. I was trying to say that Rabbit Raider is usually recommended in support with Farah in the lead, but you know what? If you're willing to not play as a ninja and you're willing to give up your double jump, this is insane. This is so good, and this is just as good as I was hoping it would be. I'm getting excited for the second part of the video where I throw a reload perk back on, because even though we'll be hitting less hard, obviously, we'll be dropping a crit damage perk, we will still be firing so much faster that it, it might be worth it, because a reload lets you reload, what, 75% like faster? So if you could shoot almost twice as often, that is worth a small decrease in crit. Uh oh, no, 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 I was meant to pickaxe that. Uh, I think that helped. I don't really know, because... It doesn't really matter. As long as we got enough traps on to activate Battle Beat, and I'm doing a good job down here. Uh-oh. Oh, man. I should not be doing this. I want to say, for the record, the way I am playing right now is for demonstration purposes only. If you are a teammate standing in a teammate's trap tunnel, don't do that. It's rude. It's ineffective. You'll get the tunnel blown up like I am. I am strictly showing off a weapon in a party full of people who know exactly what I'm doing. So I just recommend against that. Now, I didn't mention this earlier. I I'm sure you guys can maybe hear this in the audio. Uh, we're also running boom base. Uh, one of the teammates offered to. Archer was going to. That who is it? Tucci is running it. So I am going to be critting slightly more often than usual. I just wanted that to be stated. If you guys wanted to replicate my exact damage, then you would need high level teammates and a little bit of coordination. Um, if you are a teammate who just runs boom base, that's just great. Boom base is good kind of always. It just makes your teammates do more damage. And uh, Archer, if you still need brick, this east side has a lot of stuff on the. Oh my god, a taker out of nowhere. Oh man, I'm getting Frost Knight flashbacks. I don't want to cut in any clips of me dying to a taker out of sheer shame, but I have, uh, that's, that's usually how I die when it comes to the Frost Knight runs. Other than that one run where I shot a Discharger at a Ricochet mini boss, that was, that was another bad one. You know, I was thinking about relocating my position, but it doesn't even matter. I mean, look at this. I don't know where that shot went, but this crowd of targets is just dying easily. I didn't think we would need, I just want to make sure when they're not glitching through the air that I, I can, I fire before they're done glitching, or after they're done glitching, because I don't want to, I don't want to glitch through. This weapon scares me. I have no reload perk. I basically got 1.3 second reload plus the draw time, so basically a second and a half between shots. That's a lot of time. Am I right, ladies? You know, Awari, who's been helping me edit these videos, is a lady herself. I'm wondering if I'm going to get an editor note for saying that. I want to say on that note, huge thank you to her. Um, I credit her in the bottom of the description for those of you who are curious which videos she helped on. Basically, the editing process of these videos includes kind of like an A-roll cut, which is just the audio. That is strictly just me talking through and then cutting that part together so it's a coherent, you know, audio, audio track. Um, and then there's sort of the B-roll, which is the footage, the gameplay, which when I'm doing a live recording is kind of recorded at the exact same time as A-roll. But then sometimes B-roll is me cutting in that footage that I often do when I reference stuff. But 
for me to do all that has been something I've been doing for years. I've never loved editing. That's the part that I, I like the least. I love recording. I love showing off fun builds. I, my, the start of my channel were Minecraft creations that I was very proud to show off. And to this day, I like what I got done on that game. Um, but editing has always been like a hurdle. And Awari really enjoys editing and is happy to help. And so she's been like cutting up that audio track to give me like a clean start. And then she timestamps when I plug videos and stuff so I can go through and it, it saves me a lot of time. She's really having a fun time with it, it seems, which I'm glad uh, it's a perfect combo. Somebody who doesn't love editing, getting help from somebody who does enjoy editing. I mean, that's just a win-win right there. She gets experience. I get more videos out for you guys. Um, I get less specific work per video on my own. And um, so, yeah, if you guys have been enjoying a smooth amount of content for weeks and weeks straight that is largely thanks to her because i've also had a personal life that's gotten a lot more active recently and that has impacted my ability to produce videos so what kind of mini boss do we got over here oh a trap Trample. vulnerable all right well i i see now why you didn't call it out because i can't really do anything to that i'm gonna just go back to that east side that seems to be the place to go if i'm trying to get some kills here i haven't even had to use any wafers for a while i'm gonna do so just to heal a little bit and uh yeah see i stopped standing we'll take this the L on the mini boss. oh Come did on, you kill it right away yeah. Travel vulnerable is so satisfying. It's basically a freebie. Then building blocker is not a problem anymore. We got that bug patched. How good does that feel? Like, honestly. Isn't that so good? Like, building blocker was stopping traps from activating, for those who don't know. And Archer and I reported that and got it fixed. Like, it's just, it's fixed now. Traps work on them, It's which is great. A trap vulnerable mini boss that. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Did I just see something stupid? Did somebody just pull a small brain? Okay, no, 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 For whatever reason, I saw that metal and I thought they were broadsides. I would have noticed the cannonballs earlier, I'm sure. Please don't do that, you guys, uh, viewers watching these videos. If you place a broadside, make sure it's facing a wall. That is the correct way to do things. And, uh... And don't have them shooting off into nothing. That does not seem to be what I'm encountering here, which I'm glad to see. I'm, I, I was worried for a second, but I gotta, I gotta say it anyway. It's just that's not the way you place broadside. This is the most satisfying game I've recorded in a while. When I just start talking about random nonsense like broadsides and enemies are dying by the thousands in front of me, that that's a good combo. That's a good combo. You know, you know a weapon's performing well when that's how things are happening. Because this is like, this is just carnage. This is absolute annihilation. I am looking forward to the next part of this video because this is this is just Fortnite ASMR. If I shoot this, does it branch to a target? Let me see real quick here. It does. So I can shoot these beehives and it'll chain to the next target, which is awesome. You know, that gives me a nice little excuse to talk about Farah. So for a long time, uh, well, I don't know. This was a long time ago, I should say. Basically, when you chain the lightning out, it gets uh, an active. It activates Farah's ability. So when you hit a target and it chains out to a target, those chain lightning strikes will activate Farah's ability, and you can get up to like 30 extra enemies affected by a single bow shot. Uh, and there was a bit of a controversy in the community because after that was introduced into the game, Epic deemed it far too powerful, and I I can't imagine why. <laughs> Just take this entire video as note. Far too powerful. Unfortunately, the community. <clears throat> the community loved it for obvious reasons. Again, see the gameplay you're watching now. So, they just kind of reverted it, and they left this super broken playstyle in the game. With Farah in the lead, it's just way worse. In support, she's only chaining three times, but in the lead, it's five times, and that is so much more than you might seem. Um, I probably showed my chart at some point, but if I haven't, then here, I'll stop shooting. This is this is a chart. This is basically how it works. That's kind of my, my graphic. There you go. Um... So yeah, they, they, they reverted that a long time ago, and I'm, I'm glad they did. Even if it's super overpowered, I mean, if you get a little bored with using something overpowered, then just don't use it, you know? I mean, there are I other mean, ways to play. The the way they they reverted it, but set a cap on it. They reverted it, but set a cap on how many times it can chain. Really? I mean, they chain yeah, up to six, it, right? It used to chain infinitely, which is why oh, it was so overpowered. Yeah, now it changed just once. Because I remember I had that old clip, maybe I'll roll it now, where I shot into a crowd of enemies and they all just died. And I think that was from a vacuum tubo video. I think that was from the best perk. So I'll, I'll link that down below, either way. But um, yeah, I like where it's at now. Vacuum tubo destroys crowds of enemies, makes beast happy. All right, same exact loadout as before. We're just using reload instead of the double crit damage. This should be a. Oh, oh, 
Ooh, ooh, a much, much more practical version of the loadout. I know, double crit damage, hits hard, big damage, makes for a fun YouTube video. But like I said in the beginning, the second part of this will be what I would assume. I want to say it's a more practical way to play. Let's just see if it, you know, holds up in kind of the same way. Because it looks like we're still doing absolutely plenty of damage. I mean, just look at that. Oh, I miss this. Typical, typical vac and dupo. This is the dream setup. We got back-to-back -back large encampments with the vacuum duo. Oh, that one's a small one. That's okay. It doesn't matter. Oh, no. We don't have any big targets in here. So, can I outpace the nurses? It appears as though I can. And this is what I was talking about earlier. We're doing less damage per shot, but we're shooting so fast that we're just knocking out everything with ease. That encampment's gone, and I was barely done making my point. Granted, we didn't have any miss monsters in there. Gotta loot. Gotta loot. Gotta loot. Granted, we didn't have any mutt. Mist monsters in there. <laughs> yeah, moss monsters. Ooh, that'd be kind of fun. A moss-themed mist monster for the swamp biomes of this game. That'd be kind of cool. I kind of want it, but I don't I don't think that's going to happen. Ooh, one-shotting a nurse. I mean, look at that damage. What the f*** is that damage, my guy? That's <laughs> so good. I love this weapon so much. If you guys want any more... Oh, wow, another encampment as I'm talking? I was just going to run and chat, but if you guys want any more vacuum tube bow content, I have a whole video where we use nothing but the vacuum tube bow with me and my... Okay, I waited for her to keep moving, but she didn't. And uh, that was Annihilation. I used a Stoneheart Pharah build. I used uh, worse aim than what you're experiencing now, believe it or not. I had to blur the screen on multiple occasions in that video. I uh, use Xenon, Zenith as well. Really, really fun video. So yeah, more vacuum tube bow content. If you guys want it, there, there it is. Oh, this is the glory of recording with a weapon so strong, I don't even think we need traps. You can see I've got some basic cylindric fields down over there and pretty much open on the right side. But the vacuum tube bow is going to be able to shoot fast enough to where I can pick up enemies that get too far along. And it's going to be doing so much group damage that so long as I'm connecting with a target, no, <laughs> nothing's going to get through. So I haven't really tested this on smashers that much, but uh oh, that area is not backed up. Uh, it's connected over there. Okay, I just want to make sure that that ceiling's not going to go anywhere, but I haven't tested this on Smashers too much, but you can see even the basic Mist Monsters were dying to a crit, so I'm not exactly worried. This is more than enough damage, and of course there's no damage drop-off on a Sniper or a Bow. Uh, it looks like we're going to be doing plenty of damage from right back here. Of course, my aim is going to suffer because enemies like to be very jarring. There's a lot going on here, so the reticle for the Vacuum Tube Bow is infamously inaccurate. Um, you're not bad when you miss every time. Okay, like, you are over there you you might be bad Kevin sorry about you but for most people you aren't actually missing with the vacuum tube bow. The reticle is sometimes inaccurate with where it goes, sometimes it's dead accurate, sometimes the projectile is just so damn tiny you can't even hit a shot like what occurred to me earlier in this video. So it's really, really weird. And then on top of all of that, enemies are literally programmed. If you've ever been aiming at a nurse or a lobber, they are literally programmed to jump to the side when you shoot at them. So when an enemy feels like it just randomly stopped moving when you were looking at it, it did not randomly stop moving. They literally are programmed to do that. So this weapon can be very frustrating to use. In my top five bows video, link down below, I compared the vacuum tube bow and the xenon bow, and I made the controversial opinion of stating that the vacuum tube bow is better. And I think for damage, it really is. It does way more damage than the uh, xenon bow. Difference is, uh, there is a lot going on with that. Xenon bow is a lot easier to use. It's energy and just works on all elements super conveniently. Although on that note, the nature copy of this weapon does do 67% of nature, which is perfectly fine. With the amount of extra damage this weapon does, based on it doing literally more damage and chaining to multiple targets, it, it makes up for that. I, I talked about all that in the video. My point is, the, the Xenon Bow is a lot convenient, a lot more convenient to use, and that projectile is so big that anybody who has used the Xenon Bow, which is, let's be honest, all of you, uh, has noticed that you don't really need to actually hit a target in order to basically hit the target. Like that! That would have totally hit on the Xenon Bow, because it just absolutely cannot miss that weapon. The, the projectile is so big, it's so convenient to use, but yeah. Anyway, that's my long rant about the vacuum tubo being inaccurate. It's, it's a very frustrating weapon to use at times, but I don't know. I think it's fair. I, I, I think as long as it's functioning, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with a difficult to use weapon. As long as there is some level of skill that can merge the gap, that makes sense to me. It's just that when you aim straight at an enemy and your projectile goes straight through them, which can happen with this weapon, uh, it's a lot less fun to use it. So yeah, this is just enjoying the carnage right now. I don't think there's a trap above me, so I'm just gonna stand right here. I think this is the optimal spot to be. This is where a lot of the enemies are converging. Took that taker right out of the sky. Very, very nice. I, again, oh, he got stuck in the tar pit. Okay, I was waiting for him to keep moving. I didn't didn't know if that tar pit was up or not, but um, 
you know, it, it happens. But yeah, I, I want to just uh, enjoy this weapon because this is such a great... Ooh, ooh, don't stop randomly. There we go. All right, we, we got it perfectly. We timed it well. This weapon, by the way, is about to break. Um, let's do this. We're going to go ahead and recycle this. And normally I don't want to craft a brand new one just for a video. But as this is a weapon that I personally use regular... Oh, no! No! Oh, hey, I can't cancel! I can't cancel! All right, I guess we're going... <laughs> I guess we're going back to double crit damage because I can't craft it. I didn't change my schematic back. Well, I guess we're going back to double crit damage, which is not what I wanted for this video, but I think you guys saw what we were trying to show. I think we can all just enjoy the carnage that is this video. Um, this weapon is always such a treat because, I mean, look at this. I barely even trapped and we've been fine. Of course, we're running boom base again like before, but everything just dies as long as the bullet connects or the the arrow connects everything everything around it just falls it's gorgeous it's gorgeous maybe this time we'll even get a mini boss that i can actually contribute on that would be great you know it's weird because this weapon while it does so much damage and i rave about it endlessly doesn't actually um do that much single target damage like if you shoot it over and over and over it's really much more of like um okay so it does a lot of single target damage to like a lower health mist monster where one good crit will just one shot it right but against a mini boss that is not going to die in that one hit um your damage over time is actually lower than you might think there are other weapons that'll do a better job you know house buster uh, uh, what's the other one ground pounder <laughs> how did i forget that three million dps and i can't even remember the name but i will say as i'm recording this i am just getting off of being sick for a week so my brain's not fully there i've just been wanting to record these videos for so long that i kind of went for it so here's what i'm gonna do because my other copy broke, and I think we've seen what we need to see, I'm going to wait for the mini boss right here. See what we got. Ricochet? Oh, come on. This is brutal. I'm gonna I'm gonna die fighting this thing. Oh no. Okay, here. Let's let's aim for the head because that's the smartest decision. I'm hoping I can Oh my god, my health. <laughs> my health! Okay, 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 okay. Get some campfires down. I'm basically charging up the next shot to to be able to actually tank some damage. But it looks like we're getting that nice glitch. You guys see what I mean? Yeah, well, I I died. Okay, doesn't seem like I'm going to be able to do much to this mini boss, and I don't want this video to be a ton of time. If you guys want more Vacuum Dubo Carnage just for the enjoyment of watching it happen, you guys can either, you know, Twitch follow down below, request a loadout, or you guys can comment down below telling me you guys want to see more Vacuum Dubos. If there are fun loadouts for this weapon that you guys want me to try that I haven't shown on the channel, then leave a comment. Let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe if you're new. I'll see you guys in the next one. And uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of your day. Take it easy. Little note for the end of the video. 14,500 damage. Yeah, that's about right. And then Tucci's on the left with 6566. So uh, yeah. Vacuum Tubo, better than trap tunnels, question mark, exclamation point. This next section is all about shotguns. The Ground Pounder and the Husk Buster are two of the strongest weapons in the entire game. Go figure that they're on this list. I'm going to be showcasing the Ground Pounder first because with the loadout that I showed, we were doing millions of damage per second. And the Husk Buster is also amazing. It's a little slower firing. It's less sexy, but it's also hitting for more damage per shot. Super, super good. It's my main smasher killer when I don't want to use explosives. It's really excellent economic for that use case and it's in general just amazingly strong when you pair it with totally rocking out all right today in this video we're gonna be showcasing two different loadouts for one of the best shotguns in the entire game the ground pounder the first loadout as you've been seeing is just a typical blast in the past build i know that might be boring for a video like this but it honestly doesn't even matter because this weapon shreds regardless the second loadout however the second loadout is one of the strongest builds i have ever seen it rivals it doesn't quite beat it but it rivals the strongest loadout i've ever seen link to that video down below but that takes advantage of an exploit or a glitch or a weird mechanic in the game whatever you want to call it involving the black metal six perk where those booms do way more damage than you'd expect but my point is while this build doesn't quite do 3 million dps it's very close at 2.8 million damage per second double crit damage you're totally rocking out annihilates these enemies and the ground pounder is to thank for that so let's just show exactly what we're gonna be using in the first build crit rating crit damage mag size is pretty typical affliction is super strong damage to affliction is a perfect combination with that nature because it's a water season of course and mag size is very intentional so the damage perk does not actually work in the long run the mag size brings it from i believe 7 to 12 and that is actually about a hundredth of a second slower per shell than reload it's actually perfectly fine to just use mag size with this weapon and we have a different uh different quirk going on here so we're actually using chaos agent so typical shotgun build i'm not going to really go over it too much shrapnel in the lead she's great just for consistency and since we're going to be critting quite a bit you know buckshot raptor is good too going coconuts just because of health and damage all of the easy stuff typical typical but instead of typical lock 
Unlocked and Reloaded. This is what I used to recommend back in the day. We're going to be using Chaos Agent because with the fact that you can reload with a grenade, that's about a half a second reload time instead of the 4.05 that it would take for every single shell. It actually makes your damage 85% better. I'm not kidding. I broke down the numbers. Chaos Agent makes this weapon significantly stronger. It doesn't make you do more damage. It just takes away all the time you spend reloading doing zero damage in that period. So it's a very, very nice perk. Chaos Agent makes the Ground Pounder way stronger. And uh, as you'll see, let's hop in game and check it out. All right, a little hot tip since the Santa's Little Helper comes out December 25th. As of recording, that hasn't happened yet, uh, but it's probably out as of seeing the video live on the channel. Uh, so if you missed it, I'm sorry, but if it's out, you should go grab it because it could just cut through the shielders and make it very, very easy. So that's just an easy way to get rid of the shielders. And you can see if it just uh, throw a grenade or in this case, shockwave, because I still haven't figured out my key binds. It reloads so fast, and then you get right back into the fight. You just casually reload while everything dies from affliction. Oh, look at that. We got a smasher. A little hot tip for you. So, waste all the ammo, just like you're seeing here. Then, pop the war cry to reload instantly, and yeah, yeah, the smasher, smasher's gone. It's, uh... <laughs> Quick work. All right, if we get lucky and crit, this nurse is gonna die in one shot. Oh, I don't think I was quite accurate. Was that a crit? I don't actually think so. 200,000 seems low for this weapon with a crit, but you can see this is why I favor Affliction so much. I talk about it every video that I run Affliction. Uh, it just does so much extra damage. It's basically just built-in crowd clearing. Like, if you just tag every single enemy one single time, they all just wither away. It's so fantastic. I got a new keyboard recently. Thank you to Glorious for sending me one of their GMMK Pros, but I uh, cannot be hitting, I cannot get used to it. I'm supposed to be hitting five to throw my grenade and it's still a little tough for me, but you can see this weapon gives a lot of leniency towards uh, towards uh, your play style. Now, I've been gotten quite a few comments recently that have praised me for picking up loot while I play. I'm glad you guys can appreciate that because you know, the grind never really stops. Um, look at this damage. Oh my God, like it's nothing. Like, it's nothing. Shockwave does some extra damage, and that's kind of one of the hidden qualities of Chaos Agent. I've, I've mentioned this in, in recent videos, but or in previous videos, not recent necessarily, where Chaos Agent, we only ever factor how quickly he reloads your weapon, but it's encouraging you to throw grenades and use your shockwaves, as I've shown. So there's quite a bit of extra damage baked into his perk. So like my Warcry, for example. I rarely ever use my Warcry just because I don't want to over-represent these weapons. You know, I don't want to showcase it at its absolute best because I feel like how you're going to be using it throughout the regular mission is, is typically a better representation of how the weapon should be showcased in a video. But because we're instantly reloading with Chaos Agent, I mean, why not? Just combine the two. And uh, yeah, throughout the rest of the gameplay, though, I probably won't be spamming Chaos Agent as much as I am now because it's tough to keep up with the abilities. And as you can imagine, completely unnecessary. So yeah, speaking of not utilizing our full build, I'm going to pick up some coconuts and check in with you then. So now that I have coconuts, just sort of imagine everything you've seen before uh, in this clip, but stronger. It's not like a true 16% damage bonus because of the way damage stacks in this game, but yeah, this weapon is such a joy to use. I love it. You know, I could just bully regular zombies all game, all video, but we really need a bigger target to actually showcase this weapon being its strongest and it's gone. <laughs> Even a smasher just does not, just does not hold up against the, I actually thought he'd punch me. <laughs> that was a weird, awkward moment. Waiting for him to punch me so I could shoot him through the eye and then he didn't punch me. We just kind of stared at each other. You know, that might be one of those moments where you're on the battlefield fighting an enemy soldier and there's one of those first, first look, you know, like love at first sight moments where you see each other and you stop thinking, I don't, I don't want to hurt you. You're too beautiful, but we have to because it's just, it's not going to happen in this lifetime. Lifetime, as you understand. I've been watching too much Game of Thrones recently, and it's really messing me up. Uh, lords and ladies are is words that I have heard too many times recently, and it's breaking me. <sighs> it's okay. You know, I know how Game of Thrones ends, but like, it's kind of fun. All right, I, I, I'm not embarrassed. Okay, let's start the mission. All right, the mission begins. If you're wondering why I'm a cat, it's because on stream there's a one-hour cat redeem. So there's going to be a cat going on for a while now, but I, I built this nice bridge area and I'm, I'm kind of digging it because we have, we have a floater up there on a hill. Well, it's not a floater, but it's up on a hill and I want to be able to get to it comfortably. So yeah, we're basically going to be looking for the big targets because as we've demonstrated, the ground pounder can more than handle all these normal zombies. It's the big boys that are really going to give us trouble. You can see like even a fatty is just, <laughs> it's not even funny. Like, look at this. Oh no, is there a smasher? Here, let me just pop the war cry and... Okay, all right, he survived a little bit. We're pretty dependent on crits for this, but like, 
it's not even really a competition look at these smashers i love these spawns this is like a dream as a youtuber showcasing a weapon this is exactly what i hope to see <laughs> just all these smashers going up the same direction and i'm mowing them down i am the trap tunnel right now so let me just see if i can efficiently use them i'm gonna probably here let's do this yeah shockwave to kill everything in range uh-huh 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 yeah i'm actually looking at my keys now i'm getting used to reloading properly this is this is the best this is exactly what i could have show uh, hopes to showcase for you guys because i always want to show these weapons at their best in fact i actually canceled a recording session recently as of recording it was recent as of this video going out it might have been ancient history i never know with my schedule i try to upload every other day and um i record multiple videos in a day so it gets messed up sometimes but my point is i canceled a recording session at one time because the missions were so bad that i'm like okay it was all healing death burst a death bomb smoke screen and it just wasn't going to showcase anything too well so i just didn't do it and uh that's just how it goes sometimes but today this is just brilliant this is exactly what i want to see are there any more smashers i think i scared them all off now we just got nurses okay that was overkill <laughs> fun fact actually the uh so, what is that shockwave yeah shockwave can break your fall i might have called that seismic smash earlier my brain tends to just my, my, my mouth and my brain don't don't always communicate it happens more often than i'd like it to and in these, these live recordings i really get caught out but I like these videos to be live. I think it's a lot more casual that way. I'd be looking at my camera to form a connection with my viewer right now, but my cat is clearly more important. You know what? Honestly, I should make you guys look at me. I think the cat should probably just be a mainstay for every video. Does anybody in chat agree? Because I think I'd understand if, if that was the sentiment in the community. I get it. I know. I know. And before everybody gives me nice compliments about being pretty. That's okay. I'll, I'll accept those too. I'm, I'm shameless like that. Oh god, we got lobbers. So this is where the ground pounder falls apart. Uh, as much as I praise this weapon as literally one of the strongest weapons in the entire game, I'm pretty sure I ranked shotguns uh, like number three in the entire game in my top 10 weapons list. Shotguns like the ground pounder, pop shot, um, pop shot, the shotgun, not the launcher, by the way, are very, very tied. They're all very, very similar in performance, and there's really no distinguishing which one is distinctly better between like the Hustbuster, ground pounder, pot shot. But they're all super strong. And as much as I praise them, they are not snipers. They don't have unlimited range. And uh, so uh, there are times when you get enemies like uh, lobbers or throwing thoughts, as I lovingly call them, uh, who are, are not being nice. Are those flingers that I'm hearing now? Or am I going to have to go hunt down some mist monsters? Oh, it's a smasher. Ah, I don't know what a smasher sounds like. There we go. We got him. Mateo's using that crack shot build. Link to that down below. I'm only going to link the first one, okay? I've made like eight crack shot videos. I'll, I'll put one on screen, but I'll link them all down below because the crack shot loadout stacks up to a ton of damage. It is one of my favorite ways to play in the entire game, and I am shameless about making more videos on that. So there will probably be more crack shot videos in the Fall 160s playlist, and uh, that's okay. You're welcome. Oh, no. Yep, yep, yep. Somebody's running base. Woo, that right there, right there is exactly why I have been very much enjoying Totally Rockin' Out. That is why I'm looking forward to that portion of the video, because I believe in Blast in the Past as the basically good way to play. It's just a typical standard build that works. I forgot to eat my coconuts, <laughs> and it's, it's good enough, but... Oh my god, the damage from Totally Rockin' Out is absolutely astounding. It's not even close. We'll see the... we'll see that in the second part of the video, so... Definitely stay tuned for that. I actually had a, an alternate intro to the video recorded in my head yesterday, but I wasn't planning on recording a video at 1 a.m. right before bed. So, uh, yeah, there you go. I might have actually gone in an editing mode and, and redone that. You know, as I'm recording this, Recording Beast doesn't know what the intro sounded like, but you'll, you'll see it. You'll see it. Oh, look, something strong enough to survive more than two shots. All right, we'll eat a coconut. We'll reload a few shots. Let's see what we got. Oh. All right, yeah, we took care of it, no problem. <laughs> he's, he's gone, teammates, don't even worry about it. Oh yeah, we got another one right over here. I'm ready, ready to take it down. Oh, it actually survived a bit there. All right, what do we got, what do we got? What element? Uh, Okay, damage pulse, acid pools. All right, we're gonna have to plan ahead here. Get a couple of these down, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yep, pop the war cry. And see what kind of damage. This is where Chaos Agent really really shows you can see just the ridiculous amount of damage you can output when you are spamming chaos agent instant reloads look at that damage what, what the fuck is that, fuck damage, that my damage guy? my guy oh it's so fun i know i'm getting a little bit of help from teammates here but they know i'm recording a video so i'm pretty sure that was 90 percent me here yeah that actually, in that exact instance, is one of the reasons I prefer the Huskbuster versus, like, larger targets. You can see that the Ground Pounder shoots faster, but 
is just way too quick and, and too little damage. It's almost like overkill for what it's doing. And the Huskbuster does more damage per shot while shooting slower and having a higher mag size. So it's a lot better suited not only towards bigger targets, but towards being more ammo efficient as the Huskbuster is an, uh, an ammo efficient, what is it, a uh, scavenger weapon. So it's actually cheaper to craft and much more ammo efficient in that way. So uh, definitely stay tuned for a, a second feature on the Huskbuster. I don't know which one of these is going to go out first or if the Huskbuster is going to immediately follow this or if there's going to be some gap in between. I don't know what my future upload schedule is, but definitely stay tuned for that video because the Huskbuster is insanely strong just as well. Oh, I heard flingers. I can't think of a worse weapon for this than melees and shotguns, but we're going to go over there anyway. All right, got the coconut laying into him, and it's an easy kill. Remember when these guys used to require melees, so you had to go out and kill them? <laughs> it makes me think of when I run melees anyway, and then really wish I just used a ranged weapon to take care of it. You know, as, as a showcase for the ground pounder, I'm running up to these guys, but I think a rocket launcher or a bow or literally any other ranged weapon would probably be a better better pick for this, but it's okay. We'll take care of it perfectly fine. Knock it out and save the day. All right, the mission is concluded. Let's head into the totally rocking out portion of this video and see how much damage we can do with that. All right, I removed the cat cam just to show you guys why I have seven schematics. I like to keep uh, two copies, basically. One is a uh, crit build of each element with a crit damage on top. And then there's the other copies that I change around. Like for this, I got double crit damage on this. And this weapon is just so good. It's so fun. There's so many different ways to run it, including a super fast reload version. I showed that in my pop shot video. Link to that down below. If you guys want to see that, you can comment down below. I might do the same thing as this one, like a blast in the past, totally rocking out, comparing those two builds with that, that loadout. I think that could be really really fun so let me know but for now we're gonna be running double crit damage and then we're gonna be switching back to the cat cam overlay just so i can show you the loadout un unadulterated we got buckshot raptor in the lead of course totally rocking out of course battle beat of course subwafer so that we can activate it whenever we need it quick fingers because of what i said earlier it raises the damage by over 80 percent just to reload instantly as you saw against the mini boss last time it was an incredible amount of damage and hopefully if we get a good one with totally rocking out we'll be able to demonstrate that again shell shock and support of course and totally locked and reloaded of course because we're not running coconuts. Let's hop in game and enjoy the damage. All right, got some wafers. Now we got some shielders. Not my favorite thing to deal with, but it's not really gonna matter because everything just kind of dies anyway. You can see after we get enough kills, Battle Beat just kicks in and nothing can survive. It's absolute annihilation. Oh, look at that. We just got a mist monster hanging out with its buddies. <laughs> One shot. One shot. Yeah, I'm not really surprised. Okay, everything here just wants to blow me up. I, I was thinking I would just run through all casual-like, but apparently not. Got to focus on the nurses. They died in record speed. That's not surprising at all. It's almost like you eat the wafer just to get totally rocking out active, and then just battle beat takes over from there. I'm pretty sure I killed the fourth nurse on accident, and honestly, I'm not even surprised. All right, we saw him with normal stuff before. Let's war cry plus wafer plus. Oh, wow. What? <laughs> we did one shot. I mean, less of the Pell is probably connected on this one, but I feel like that's completely that's completely backwards. I, I feel like I should have one shot at this one, if anything. But actually, for those who don't know, it shoots in a predictable spray. I'm not sure if it's easy to show it, but you shoot in like a star pattern. Um, it's the same way every single time. If I had a better wall with uh, the, the decal there, it would make more sense, but... There you go. Hello, crow. Oh, oh, shoot. It almost got away. Oh, what kind of weapon is that? Oh, it's the ranger. Does anybody ever want me to cover the ranger? Every time I bring it up, there's only one person, and every time that's like, eh, no, it's garbage. I mean, not every weapon is exactly worth a feature, but, you know, I'm always optimistic. Looking for that stuff that might be a, a sleeper pick. I wanted that metal so bad. I did not want to break it. I broke it on accident. Wow. That one shot to the head is so satisfying. Every time I do it, it just surprises me over again. It's like the plasmatic discharger. Every single time I see it annihilate a smasher, I, I'm just like seeing it for the first time. It's so satisfying. Oh, we got a target that might survive more than two shots. Let's see. How is he going to fare? Okay, you know what? I didn't hit all the pellets on him. And that was enough for him to last more than two shots. Very impressive. I'm going to go bully these guys. All right, how do I do this? Do I throw a grenade and then eat my wafers and then just pop? He's dead. <laughs> Oh, when I said 2.8 million DPS, I meant it. All right, this is a tough one. I'm sure he's going to survive more than one shot. Let's see it. Wafer, headshot. Okay, okay, I got an unlucky crit and all the pellets didn't hit. He survived. Survived to see another second, almost. 
All right, the game has begun. I only put down a few traps out here just to farm battle beat. I'm hoping that'll activate Tully Rockin' out enough to be able to use it against the big targets. And it looks like I should have prepped a little better. They're going all the way up over here. That is a weird perspective to take, but here we go. So this is where the Ground Pounder is a bit better than the Husk Buster. So the Husk Buster excels a lot more in single target damage, but the, Husk, or the, the Ground Pounder can do a lot faster fire rate with less damage per shot, and it adds up to do really good crowd clearing. Oh, look at all these guys just getting farmed. I put the electric fields in a weird spot where I'm putting them far enough back to where they're kind of spawn killing but not doing everything. I want to keep some of these smashers alive and, and see what this does against a 250 power level because that's what I want to see. Oh, just some easy zombies. There is absolutely nothing this loadout can't just annihilate. <laughs> it's like, it's not even worth using chaos agent because everything is just dead. Everything dies so fast. It's so powerful. Using one of these loadouts is like, it makes you feel almost invincible. And uh, that's the kind of build I enjoy using. We barely have any traps down. We just have defensive traps and it's not even, not even worth getting more. Ooh, look at that fury. Should I be doing a Storm King's fury 160? Because that needs to happen. <gasps> Here we go. This is the big one. Here we go. Knock these guys out, and you guys can already see. Just pop a war cry. <laughs> I know he was at half health, but I don't think he was surviving much longer, even if he was at full. Is there another smasher? Did I scare him all away already? I'm just going to cleave through these guys first. You pop the uh, propane with the... Uh, if you hit the propane, it just blows up. Easy way to take care of them. Throw the uh, grenade right there. Kill everything. Get battle beat active. Just uh, one shot the... Ooh, I was going to hopefully bank it. That worked just like I hoped. All right, here we go. Eat another wafer, even if it's not necessary. Hell, I got third. Oh, that was a 250 power level smasher. Oh, my God. It's like he, he wasn't even there. Just an easy crowd. Here we go. Just one, two, three. Do a little shockwave action. And they are just all dead. Just spraying into the... Oh, man, I always do that. Spraying into the crowd. There we go. There we go. Smasher over here. Pop a wafer and... <laughs> Three shots? Three? That's all it took? Oh my lord, it's so good. So good. Here we go. We just pop a... There we go. We throw a grenade. Got totally rocking out active from all the traps. And he's gone. <laughs> and he's gone. If we didn't crit that much, I think it's just because uh, Battle Beat was probably fading, and it doesn't even matter. I've actually used this build uh, previously, and even off camera uh, in those experience, experiments with this weapon, I found that you don't even really need to totally rock it out active. The ground powder on its own is good enough to crit 10% of the time and do just fine. Obviously, you want it to crit, okay? I'm just saying the weapon, uh, the weapon works without it. Are there any big targets? Because there are no traps over here, and we're holding it down just fine. I want something big to shoot at. Okay, we got a little riot husky. I'll take, oh, all right, and, yeah, okay, yeah, and he's gone. It's like a, it's like a kid who's too good at a. You know, a, a, did anybody ever play card games as a kid? I always got like two good Pokemon cards and Yu-Gi-Oh, and then my friends didn't want to play with me anymore, and that's kind of what I feel like I'm experiencing now. The uh, online version of my gaming childhood was way better. Oh my god, I keep messing up my keybinds! Ah, it's so embarrassing! All right, Smash, here we go. I'm gonna pop a War Cry, eat a wafer, and... <laughs> it's not even... E it's not even fun! It's not even funny, I should say. It's definitely fun to annihilate a Smasher like that. There's no difficulty in it! Just walk up and they're gone. <laughs> that was a fatty. Those husky husks are actually difficult to kill, but uh, not with this weapon, obviously. Look at that. No critting. I mean, not very impressive, but like, come on. Everything else dies so quick. You got to give them a chance, right? Oh, man. Uh, I've fallen. I've fallen. Help me. Look at that. Repaying the fate. Oh, no. Robin, my savior, my one and only. Thank you. All right, we got to pop that, do this, eat the wafer, just go straight through the shielder. doesn't even matter. The shielder won't save you. I want a smasher. Oh, yes, perfect. Ask and you shall receive. Do one, two, three, four. Can I throw a grenade? Thank you. There we go. All right, all right. Let's just eat a wafer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, wow, that one, uh... I want to say, I want to say that one put up a fight, but it was really more of just not critting over and over. It happens sometimes. You know, even with Totally Rocking Out, you're typically looking at upwards of 55, 60... Where did he just... Did he just fall out of the map? Oh, oh, he's back. Oh, oh, and he's gone. Even with Totally Rocking Out active, you're typically looking in the range of 50 to 65% uh, crit chance. So that's really not that high, all things considered. Oh, man. Here we go. Uh, trap vulnerable. Boo. Boo. 
I'm gonna just try anyway. Boo! Oh, can we get an F in chat? Can we get an F in chat? This is just disappointing. Well, I guess I'll go play with the Smashers, I guess. You know, we didn't quite get the mini boss, but you can imagine just like this, but like, you know, 10 times more health. <laughs> and it probably would have been just fine. Let's see. Uh, this is the lazy way to do it. Uh, broadsides would be the fast and efficient way, but uh, nope, it's still not even doing it. Here we go. Let's just do this, do that. Oh, no, not sound well, not sound well. No, 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 I'm gonna die. Ah! There we go. Oh, well, yeah, no, we both died trying to kill the mini boss. All right, I'm gonna let them handle the mini boss because clearly I'm unqualified and go shoot at what? I'm not even seeing any smashers. Should we just go bully the throwing thoughts? I got you. Don't worry here. Just do one shot, one shot. This weapon is nuts. This is why I ran Chaos Agent, as you can see. Uh, reloading is something you're gonna be doing constantly with this weapon, which is actually why, uniquely to shotguns, uniquely to shotguns, uh, you actually want locked and reloaded. Like, that's typically recommended even for uh, mag size weapons as well. But with shotguns, you are reloading constantly. And that's why mag size over reload is, is a lot better, because you'll just have more upfront shots. Uh, even though you're reloading constantly, it's basically the same speed, but you get to just annihilate these bigger enemies with ease. And mag size plus chaos agent is better. Chaos agent is better pretty much the more mag size you have, because he just instantly reloads. So having a reload perk is redundant in that case. And uh, yeah, just a. Uh, few things to consider when building a loadout let me just do that yeah wafer and then oh, okay oh okay shoot all right yeah it turns out warcry actually does help quite a bit warcry only buffs the damage of ranged weapons but it's still fairly substantial i think it is only ranged weapons i don't believe it actually buffs the weapon damage for melees either but I've done quite a few uh, loadouts in the past where I intentionally buffed my minigun with like Banshee where it gives you that 8.5 weapon damage and it doesn't actually uh, increase the damage of the minigun. I always forget that, but I've shamed myself enough times to where I think it's uh, it's going to stop happening. Well, we kind of failed on the mini boss, but this was already enough of a showcase. This weapon is ludicrously strong. If these videos could comfortably be an hour long, I would I would do it. I mean, I've used this weapon, like I said, uh, but before I recorded the video, I was talking to stream chat about how I had to craft a new one of these uh, for the double crit damage and I couldn't find my old copy because I went through it. I had so much fun running this loadout uh, in a different stream that I, I, I killed the durability in like two games. In fact, even this one copy, we can see I went through half the durability. So definitely fun, kind of expensive considering the energy, or I'm sorry, the, uh, the shotgun shells and the, the weapon crafting required, but totally worth it. Super fun, highly recommended. How much damage did I do after all that? 9,100. Now, my, my teammates didn't put down as many traps and they knew I was recording a video, so it's not exactly balanced, but still so much damage. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you want to see. And uh, yeah. Take it easy. If you're wondering on oh, my cat right now, it's because Twitch chat was having fun. I recorded all these on stream, link down below. Today, we're gonna be following up the Ground Pounder video where we showcased in that video a Blast from the Past build and a Totally Rocket Out build. We're gonna be doing the same today. Blast from the Past is perfectly fine because the Huskbuster is incredibly strong. This weapon does not need that much help at all. Super safe build that I like to showcase just for the average user. But if you wanna crank it up a notch, double crit damage, Totally Rocket Out is incredibly strong. The Huskbuster is a high damage, slower fire rate, higher mag size than the Ground Pounder version that is super super ammo efficient because it's a scavenger weapon and it packs a punch not only is it super strong for normal missions but because double crit damage totally rocket out is so good i actually ran it in a frost knight run and it did really well all the way into the end game so link to that frost knight run down below link to the ground powder video down below i uh have uh, most of my schematics were double crit damage because of that frost knight run but i switched this one to crit ready crit damage i crafted another copy to save my reperk and uh, this is the build we're running so mag size because it's basically the same as reload uh per shell because of the way that it factors reload time mag size is the same reloading speed and we're running chaos agent uh crit rating crit damage is great because that's just the way you want to go nature is super strong against water enemies which is what we're dealing with right now then we got damage to afflicted and affliction because it's super super strong the loadout i'm using is super standard shrapnel headhunter in the lead blast in the past hide might gotta get the extra crit damage then we got chaos agent as mentioned and coconuts for health and damage super straightforward build let's hop in game and check it out all right we got a miss monster easy coconut let's see what we can 
can oh yep nope that's uh that's the host buster for you and you can see the enemy just taken away from affliction it's annihilation even against the crowd you can see you just tag everything once and they all just sort of afflict away and i i keep messing up my keybinds i did that in the ground punter video as well where's the taker oh there we go and it's gone boy i must be popular because we got a crowd forming here's what i'm gonna do we're gonna just eat a coconut and just let them all come to me pop a war cry oh yeah oh it's easy oh it's easy this weapon man this weapon is so strong all right just standing in the middle of a giant encampment what could possibly go wrong are we not gonna get big to oh there we go there we go let's see how can oh uh, 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 you know what i was gonna say just how can we deal with these bigger targets but they did not last very long at all um all right well <laughs> I guess that's taken care of. We got one more over here, but at a range, this weapon's not that strong, but eh, even then, Affliction's gonna take care of it, and it's it's not gonna be a problem. The Husk Buster is so good at single target damage, but uh, the slower fire rate makes it struggle a bit against crowds, although this clip would not lead you to believe that. <laughs> and this is another case where you can see without the Chaos Agent instant reload, it's got a really long reload. It's a very slow, uh, slow reloading, slow fire rate weapon. But against these normal enemies, it doesn't really need the help. So against if we get a good mini boss later against that, you'll definitely see it shine. Oh, look at that. I finally found something that might survive more than three shots. Let's see. Okay, all right. Some unlucky crit. Oh, yep, yeah, yeah, that's all it takes. See, that is just the funny thing about running crit builds is you do so... I, I want to say so little damage, but the Husk Buster is still pretty good. You're doing a lot less damage up until you crit, and it dies. I think we've seen enough. Let's get this defense started. All right, the mission has begun. We actually have a weird defense going on here, where they're all spawning in these up and down. It looks like a Minecraft cave system, but hopefully hopefully we can get some big targets, because that's really the only thing this weapon is going to struggle against. You might see a lot of cuts in this video, because the big targets like that are the only things that survive even a few shots. All these basic zombies will just wither away. Anything that got hit at all. But that, that right there is what I was hoping to see. Let's pop a uh, coconut real quick and easy. <laughs> easy. Not the most damage up front. I think the Totally Rockin' Out version will definitely blow these smashers out of the water. But you can see, even with no help, just Blast in the Past being nice and tanky and easy to use, this weapon is doing fantastic. Look at that. Just normally strong. It has no problems. I feel like the Ground Pounder killed a little quicker, but the Husk Buster is a lot more ammo efficient. It has a lot more left in the tank. So the two weapons are, are very, very comparable. And that's why I'm at least recording them on the same day. I'm hoping these videos went out on the same time, sort of. Never like on the exact same day, but at least within a relative time frame, because they are so similar that it's honestly preference. Like people ask, what's better, Ground Pounder or Husk Buster? And I, I have no idea. Um, in my opinion, I do believe because of ammo efficiency and the absolute overkill nature that is the ground pounder like the ground pounder shoots fast but it does so much more damage than it takes to kill a basic enemy that i feel like it's unnecessary so in my opinion i think the husk buster is the best shotgun in the game but that has so many asterisks on it there's so many caveats to that statement that it's not really something i feel comfortable putting out there too much uh because it's just not that simple it's just not that simple there are other shotguns that do really really great like the double boiler is the hardest hitting shotgun or actually i think it's the hardest hitting non-launcher in the game which is a huge amount of damage and with the steam cloud six perk it does really really well Ooh, look at that discharger it does really really well but it just doesn't play the same as the husk buster and ground Potter. you know these weapons are both semi-auto shotguns that do great for pretty much everything i don't think the husk buster is bad at any one thing you can see it's decent enough for crowd clearing does fantastic against a single target uh even as he's ripping across our base but it doesn't really fall short anyway crowd clearing and single target are the two big factors and huh <sighs> The Ground Pounder and the Husk Buster both do fantastic, so that's why I just featured them both, you know? Which one's better? Doesn't matter. Just use whichever one you're in the mood for. The Husk Buster shoots a little slower. Not everybody likes that. I understand that. It's also cheaper, which is kind of uh, something not a lot of the endgame players might care about, but I feel like it matters. Scavenger weapons are, uh, are funny because the Husk Buster is not even the only one. The Stampede is a clone. It's the same in every single way. <laughs> uh, this weapon has a little doppelganger, but that doppelganger is more expensive, which makes it absolutely obsolete i guess the husk buster does technically have more durability uh or no the husk buster has less durability because it's a scavenger weapon but i did the math long ago and i compared like the durability compared to the relative cost and uh you want to go scavenger every single time yeah you'll have to craft the husk buster more often but it'll cost less so it really just doesn't even matter unless you plan poorly and it breaks in the middle of a mission okay that's where things can get a little muddy but it 
it doesn't really... I, I don't imagine that will happen much. I don't think it really matters. Am I about to die blast in the past? I get so lazy with shotguns these good... Like, weapons this good, uh, I get lazy and I just stop eating my coconuts. I know that I basically have a dead perk when I'm not using it, but what's the point? I mean, it's killing everything anyway, so if I don't need the help and I don't need the health, then it doesn't really matter. I am getting a little bit of my damage from story and might. It's not a lot, but we need something to activate totally right... Or, <laughs> totally right, no. We need something to activate blast in the past, so story and might is just the best pick for that, uh, especially for using a ranged weapon but so yeah so yeah keeping my health up for him is good but he's not really doing that much so i don't i don't really worry about it too much Ooh, did that anti-air take care of it i hope that anti-air isn't hitting the tire traps i mean i'm not lagging so i guess it doesn't matter i guess it doesn't matter as long as we're doing fine i'm, I'm good but yeah you can see this weapon is just absolutely shredding i love it so much this is where chaos agent just comes in handy you know if you just shoot kind of slowly just carefully picking your targets you should have enough grenades to keep it going um as i said as i say that i'm kind of out but that's where you kind of alternate between the grenades and the shockwave and the uh the, the, the war cry the war cry is definitely my favorite if we get up against a mini god mini boss in about a minute here that i can actually attack i am going to be enjoying that war cry i almost changed all of my schematics to crit any crit damage just so i could have one of each element in case of the mini boss I didn't do that, so I'm really, really hoping it's not a fire mini boss. If it is, I, I think I have a water one crafted. I think I'm okay, but I, I might be in some trouble. So we'll have to find out what it is together. It'll be spawning any second now, so yeah. Kind of excited for that. I didn't get that many coconuts either, but uh, I don't think it mattered. Ooh, we got a smasher. Yeah, 2 million health, by the way, without the health pylon. So that's something I, I often forget about with the shotgun heroes is that they have really, really high health. Uh, mine is supercharged. I'm in a full party of high level players, but 2 million health is is a ton, especially with Blast in the Past. Um, even without Blast in the Past, that health is, oh, it's trap vulnerable anyway. Yeah, we got unlucky in the totally rocking out section of the ground powder video too. Very, very disappointing, but we could just sort of, uh, oh my God, slowing pools is not good. Here, can I actually build in here? There we go, yeah, 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 there we go. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotta get the broadsides down. Broadsides are just the best for this. Um, if he actually behaves and lets us kill him, come on, man, come on, just let just let us kill you. Yeah, it's a tank smasher mini boss. So if the broadsides are looking bad right now. That is why. I'm just trying to build and, and keep the walls out. I know you can't see this, but uh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh! I, I messed up. I think he's pretty much just gonna die now. Yeah, he teleported. He's probably gonna walk into our traps. I want to make sure he dies. So let's just do that. There we go. Just one. Uh, maybe two here. Let's just do this. I don't know why that happened. There we go. Yeah, just get a couple, a couple of zappers down. It'll be super easy, barely an inconvenience. There we go. Yeah, just get that kind of high up, nice and out of the way. Should zap it just fine. All right, here we go. Let's see what the the Hustbuster can do. Oh wow, big damage! Took out the mini boss. <laughs> oh, it's so sad. I wish there was like a creative mode or something in Save the World where I could just spawn a mini boss and show you guys like how strong this weapon can be against it because I personally want to see it. I'm not just a YouTuber trying to showcase in this instance. I personally as a gamer want to get a good mini boss, but Trap Vulnerable just doesn't give me anything to showcase, but it's okay. You guys have been seeing how this thing has been shredding. Just imagine a smasher, but like 10 times the health, you know, it's basically the same thing. Uh, and also, it's not worth running an entire mission just to show a mini boss. I tried that in the uh, Blackout AR video with the, the best loadout I've ever seen. Link that down below. It, it wasn't worth it. We actually got a, uh, what was it, uh, a ricochet mini boss, and I ended up killing myself over and over and over again. It was an absolute travesty. Oh, look at that. We got a couple of mist monsters out here. I took a break from recording, so I don't really have anything ready, but it doesn't even matter. Just throw a grenade. Easy. <laughs> It actually surprises me. I didn't expect a crit. It just chunks for so much damage. I can't wait to see the totally rocking out. Let's just uh, close out this mission a little early and check in with you then. All right, the cat stream has ended. We're going to be doing the same build as last time, but double crit damage. Buckshot Raptor in the lead because, of course. Totally rocking out because, of course. Battle Beat because, of course. Subway first so we can have it active in a pinch and we're not relying on Fumble. Chaos Agent because, again, it buffs your damage by like 50, 80%. It's not like a direct damage bonus, but it removes all the time spent reloading, which is a huge amount of downtime when you're not doing any damage. So cutting that out effectively buffs your damage output over time by 80%. Shell Shock and support because, of course. And Lock the Reloaded because 
because of course let's hop in game and enjoy the carnage so i imagine this is going to be a pretty short opening clip because we got the double crit damage and we're just gonna yeah that's uh honestly that's about how i expected that to go <laughs> all right that one was a little too quick let's uh let's go ahead and try that again got to get the wave for popped and he's gone yeah uh double crit damage might be a little too strong for normal enemies i doubt we're gonna be able to see much until the mission actually begins it's it's pretty dang strong there we go we got a smasher that's what we need to deal with there we go we just stare at him you know let him know oh fuck. okay actually i was trying to get a thumbnail spot all right here we go here we go so we're gonna pop a wafer uh-huh uh-huh we're gonna pop a wafer and then we're gonna get a war cry going easy setup <laughs> three shots <laughs> that's all he survived that was nothing that was nothing. <laughs> this is so strong. Oh, what a beautiful sight. Not one, but two enemies that might survive more than one shot. All right, here we go. Here we go. I'm excited. Here we go. One. Oh, okay. All right. Well, we didn't crit. So it, it effectively died in, it died in two crits, uh, but it took three shots to get that second crit. Where did the other smasher go? Did he just disappear? Is he just afraid? Oh, I see. I see. He's coming in. I see. All right. All right. I got to pop the wafer and uh, one, two. Yeah. Oh, hey, look at that. Survived the second shot, but affliction, you know, one in the end. All right. Got another encampment. Here we go. Yep. 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 A little bit of a, a little bit of an awkward start. Just got to get that wafer pop because just like in the ground pounder video, it's pretty important to get enough kills going with battle beat just to keep the toy rocking out rolling. Cause you can see once you got it active, every Everything dies. There's absolutely nothing that is safe. Got a few things to clean up over here. One and oh, not two. We got more enemies over here. Where, where are they going? Where? Oh, you're chasing a chicken. You're, ch you're chasing a chicken. I'm trying to kill your encampment here, man. Come on. Come on. What are these animals doing? By the way, if you guys want an animal tier list, link to that down below. All right, and the mission begins. Let's see if we got any big targets, you know, because this is very similar to the ground pounder situation where only big targets are even going to survive. And <laughs> even then, even then, this weapon just makes quick work of anything. Uh, there's really nothing that could survive the ground pounder for very long. Well, Hotsbuster. Honestly, one and the same in my brain. I have uh, not been recording as many videos lately as of recording this right now, <laughs> and I'm changing that today. And so my brain is just fried, apparently. Like, I am very out of out of the norm with recording these videos. Oh, here we go. All right, here we go. All right. Reload with the war cry. And, oh, I don't have Totally Rocking Out active. <laughs> I think one-shotting it from that health range was indicative of how that would have gone if he was full health. Um, it's weird to record these in a Cat 4, because we need to have some traps, especially with them being as spread out as they are. But... It makes it hard to determine which ones. Uh, like, where do we put the traps? Because I want to showcase for you guys how much damage this weapon can do, but if nothing's surviving... There we go. All right. Pop a little, little wafer action. Oh, unlucky with the crits, but when it did crit, it did, like, 40% of its health, which is less than I would have expected. Yeah, that's what I was hoping for right there. Smasher just dying with ease. Dying with ease. It had no chance. No chance at all. Oh, got a nice little nurse. And, oh, and she's gone. <laughs> it makes this weapon very hard to record for. It's like, I want to really enjoy the totally rocking out section of this video, but it has to be shorter because everything just dies so fast. So fast. I sounded like that cartoon character. <laughs> Funny thing is, I don't even remember the cartoon character I sound like. I just remember somebody in some show talking like that. So comment down below if you can remember who that was. Sig just offered me food and I'm so excited. Sig is a housemate has been living with me and my family for a while and is also a chef, well, cook, I don't know. He goes by cook, I think, of like 20 years. And so he makes the meanest fried egg sandwich and I am super excited for it. So this is just my life right now. Recording a Fortnite video while while shooting hopefully smashers but nothing really survives a shotgun so anything that i can at this point while while enjoying food you know it's great to just double up on that like if you're making food anyway you know <sighs> might as well make two right you know i'm, I'm not, not too shameless to ask oh is that a flinger all right perfect i got you throw the grenade eat the wafer and wow you know i want to say like wow they're surviving but then you crit and they're gone <laughs> this weapon is all about critting and if i would have put down more sin electric fields i would be obviously critting a lot more getting battle beat active with the traps is definitely a great way to go but i was not really sure exactly where i could put those down so i didn't do that as much in this in this section but that's okay oh my god the damage oh look at it go the damage nothing nothing survives you pop a war cry plus totally rocking out with this thing everything is dead it does not care 
Look at that! Oh, oh, the shield are messing it up, but that's okay. I'm gonna throw a grenade right there. Eat the wafer for the war. Yeah, no, it's not a war cry. It's it's totally rocking out. Basically a war cry. Oh man. Oh man. That is great. So this is tricky. We got shielder action. I keep throwing the wrong thing. I keep hitting four instead of five, and I don't know why. I don't know why. It messes me up so much. Maybe I should consider new keybinds. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. What is the solution to my problem? I guess just get good, you know? Just practice more. Every time I mess up is another time I feel like I'm gonna not mess up in the future. There we go. Do that, do that. Easy, correct ones. And, oh, didn't quite three shot the smasher. We've been getting unlucky with those crits, but you guys can see the damage is phenomenal. We should be seeing a mini boss in about a minute here, so I'm getting excited for that. All right, what do we got? What do we got? I am so nervous. Please be something I can actually, it's smoke screen. Ah, oh, can we get an F in chat? So disappointing. This is just the worst. You know, this is triple games. As I'm recording this, I did the ground pounder video right before this. So I'm doing three matches in a row with a mini boss is just not something I can wail on. I really wanted to demonstrate just how insanely strong chaos agent can be. But it's only an amount of damage that makes sense on a mini boss because nothing survives it. Oh, so it's so disappointing. So disappointing. How about I just shoot at it and then we can all pretend I'm doing damage. So how much how much damage am I doing right here? Uh, like 6,000. Let's pretend I'm doing like 2 million, all right? So we'd be laying into it just like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you throw the grenade and you're right back into the action. So just imagine I'm doing way, way more than I am right now. I bet there's somebody watching this muted. Just like, oh my god, Beast is doing it. And I'm, I'm dead. Yeah, this mini boss is going crazy on us. I would typically recommend in this configuration a crypt build physical ravager as the smokescreen mini bosses can never have an element. Uh, but I don't have that. Mine's nature or energy, which is annoying. I need to make another copy. I have two copies of this weapon supercharged and I don't have one of them physical right now, which is, oh, and he's gone. All right. I don't know if he despawned or teleported. Um, mini bosses despawn now, which I'm still not used to. This is an update that happened a very, very long time ago, and I've never liked it. It never makes sense to me. Like, is it meant to be a, a safety? Like, we don't... So we don't fail the mission? Or is it like a punishment? We don't get the rewards if we don't kill it fast enough? Like, I don't... Is this meant to be a difficult part of the mission, or... I don't know what they're trying to do. I don't know. It happened when husks started despawning if they uh, stand around for too long. So mini bosses are affected by that. And I'm pretty sure they survived enough updates where I'm assuming Epic wants that to be the feature. I really don't know. I, I don't know what they want happening with that. Oh, look at that. Easy. Reload. Activate battle beat. No, I was hoping I'd get enough kills with that to activate battle beat. Oh, no. Why am I even bothering? Can I kill it real quick? Yeah, easy. Well, that was the Husk Buster. Nice follow up to the Ground Pounder. One of the strongest weapons in the entire game. It's an absolute travesty that I couldn't get the mini boss clip. Maybe if I use this in the future, I can record a clip. I don't know. That's expecting too much of me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you guys want to see in the future. Comment down below and uh, I'll see you in the next one. This last section is featuring some melees. This first video is underperforming on my channel, but I wanted to highlight it because we are not clickbait one shotting power level 250 smashers, even elemental ones. The Storm King's Ravager is insanely strong. This video plays like a montage. We have recorded, I think, two or three different games just to get all the footage I wanted for the video. It's carnage. It's extremely strong, so definitely enjoy. And then the second part is actually a Stormblade loadout where you are causing crit hits cause an explosion and blowing up everything in sight. Later math has shown that Assassin Sarah is actually better in the commander slot. How much better? I don't actually know. I'll probably have a new video up on the channel featuring that in general, but while Fiona the lead is plenty of damage as you're about to see, so enjoy this final segment. Yeah, I think a blue light color be fitting for all the shield using we're going to be doing today. Today, we're going to be one hitting smashers. You're probably seeing some clips from later on in the video on what exactly is going to be happening, but we're going to reel it in to show you a message I got. AS407 is a well-known bug finder in the Discord. He has a list of like all the bugs in the game and he's always finding new crazy stuff. And he did a huge breakdown on like basically the most damage you can do in a, in a second message he sent me and, and this is one of the builds here this is his ear splitter build that might be another video but i told him all right all right ben's war cry twitch link down below if you guys ever want to be a part of the recording if this thing can actually one hit a smasher 
I will make a video. So we ran a mission, and I built the loadout he suggested, and yeah, we one hit a smasher. I had to do some things today. I had to glitch my totally rocking out on accident. I had to get Eddie not just powered up, but I had to pull him out of the book. I spent flux on this video, and I'm not happy about it. I even moved around my superchargers to max out Lotus Assassin. Sarah, let's talk about the build. We are going to be stacking up our damage to 90%, activating, totally rocking out with subwafers or battle beat, which can be done through the traps, which is nice and automatic. Then, we're gonna have Eddie in support, increasing our energy damage. We are going to need to max out our health and shield pylons. We're gonna be doing that with the blue glow. And energy siphon. I do not recommend this. AS407 will argue with me, but I really believe that Intergalactic Ken and Eddie are, are not that practical for normal builds. Your shields will rarely stay up, especially if you're in a crowd of enemies. White Elf Fiona, Corrosive Strikes are going to be the usual suspects that are better. Uh, Ken, or whatever the Mythic Ken is that gives you the 75% damage bonus, will usually be better. But... We one shot a smasher with this build, so I told him I'd do it. I told him I'd do it. We got Saurian Claws in support as well, because Paley Luna is just amazing enough to put in support. She is still worth having. And then, of course, the Ravager itself, the big weapon of the day. I'm going to have to change my perks real quick here. Triple crit damage attack speed. Nice and clean with the energy, of course. That's why we got the blue light as well. Let's hop in game, get set up, and uh, one, sh one shot some smashers. So, as a quick demo for why I'm not going to be recording any regular gameplay, you can see this is a power level 160 enemy, and it goes down with ease. Uh, there's really nothing in the game that's going to survive more than, like, one slash, including a power level 250 smasher. So, since that's what we're here to see, let's just hop straight to the defense. All right, the defense has begun, and it's a very blue game, so kind of a nice time to point out the higher resolution I've been recording at. If you guys want to set it to 4K, if your internet can handle it, it should look really good. I'm not technically recording at 4K, but it'll allow a higher bitrate on the video, which means even if you watch at 1080p or 1440p, it should still look a lot better. I'm smasher hunting today, so I'm going to cut until I see a smasher. All right, here we go. So I'm going to need... Totally rocking out active, which is happening from the uh, the, tra the traps that I put down. Then I need to activate enough hits, five hits, that is, for Lotus Assassin, and then get right up close and personal, and the Smasher dies in one hit. So, I'm going to show a little bit of math of what's going on, a little puff and chat. These are all the numbers. We can ignore them. The final number solo, theoretical maximum damage, is 2.5 million. For those of you who don't know, a power level 250 smasher has this much HP, which is just under 5 million. So even without the team, you should be able to one-hit a smasher. But wait... Two and a half million is half. Yeah, so what AS407 found, like I said, he's an avid bug hunter, is that the damage when you're up close and personal doubles for some reason. So as you just saw, as I demonstrated in game, you can just do double damage and sit down a full health smasher in one shot. I'm gonna look around and hopefully find another one. Oh, just as I say it, there we go. All right, so let's do the same thing. We're gonna pop a wafer, hit a few enemies just to stack up five hits. Ooh, yeah, you gotta hit it right on, and you need to be very up close and personal. This won't be one hit, but, oh no. Okay, yeah, it takes a lot of setup. That's what I don't absolutely love about this build. You do do a lot more damage by having shields up, but you can see Ravager's still a very strong melee altogether. Even if we're not one hitting the Smasher truly, it's still a lot. All right, I'm gonna clean up a Smasher. Never do this in a normal game. Do not open up your own walls, but I just wanted to demonstrate how strong this is. I love killing these Smashers. All right, we got another smasher. Here we go. Here we go. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo! 90 percent. You really need to get it set up perfectly right to do a lot of damage. But when it does, oh my god, it hits so hard. Unless you don't crit, and then it doesn't do nearly as much. You need totally. So here's the problem with this build that I'm 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 encountering. You need totally rocking out to crit, but then you <laughs> you need to have your stacks of five damage from Assassin Sarah. But if you switch off your weapon, you lose it. It's so hard to get it set up. You know, I uh, I know it's not a smasher, but pretty satisfying, right? Yeah, the heavy attack of this weapon's always amazing. All right, here we go. So it's not going to be one hit because I already started it, but woo, almost. Yeah, I need to get it like centered for it to do max damage. By the way, we hopped into another game just to get some more smashers. All right, we got another smasher right here. Farm up some damage. Ooh, 75%. I want to hit it at one shot. One more time. All right. I need five hits. Need five hits, everybody. Stack up her damage all the way. 
get up nice and close and personal. Ooh, not full health, not full health, but close enough. Here we go, there's another one. Do that, there we go. Five hits in a row, come on. Yo, oh, so close, he was one HP. All right, we got another smasher. Uh-huh, uh-huh, oh, we got two smashers. I need to stack up five hits, how about three? Yeah, we definitely need five hits. <laughs> need to eat a wafer. This is what AS407 told me to do, was just do that. To, like, activate the shield, but it didn't do enough damage. And maybe two at once? Oh, I healed the other one, which is honestly fine. See, this is the problem with, um... This is the problem with Lotus Assassin. I like to see the full health wave of damage, but... I need to stack up five hits, which means I need to hit five other targets in order to demonstrate it. So let's just stack up against the Smasher and then enjoy that damage, yeah. You can see that it was activating twice, which is where our one hit potential is coming from, and it's a tremendous amount of damage. Hopefully we'll get some more Smashers on the next wave. All right, we got another Smasher. I got some stacks uh, built up here. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo, that was right clean. That was good. Another one on you. There we go. So this is a water smasher. I'm just going to stack up on this one. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, wow. Look how much health he's down to. Like, I know and the theme here. of oh, another one. I know what the theme of this video is one shotting smashers, but like, wow. Here, we can farm it off that guy and then go into this one. Here we go. Whoa. That was a water smasher, which is taking 25% less. And that's even more impressive. Oh, I want to do it again. Here we go. I need to stack up my damage. What if I just didn't? Okay, yeah. I kind of lost all my stacks. Let's do this. Down up to five. Look how much health, though. Like, again, I know the theme is one-shotting, but that's insane. Here we go. Let's, let's hit him Maybe onto the side. Oh, look at that health. This is amazing. And we got the mini boss and another smasher. I'm spoiled. Let's do this. Let's attack these guys. Stack up five hits. Do that. <laughs> I don't even care. I didn't quite one shot it. And building blocker smoke tree. This is the dream for this build. Look at how much health that was. Was that four million? Attack him. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. Ooh, 3.2 million. Not enough to one hit a smasher, but like... Clearly easy to solo a mini boss. I do not currently have Toy Rock and Out active, by the way, so let's just do that right now. Hit this guy. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. Whew. Basically soloing a mini boss. I know my teammates have started a bit there, and I know I accidentally. Oh, she was raising her hand. I thought I left a while hanging. I feel better now. I know that, like, I didn't literally solo that mini boss, but I think we can all tell that I killed that way within realm of time before I despawned. And I think Healing Death Burst saved that Smasher. I think that wall blocked part of my wave of damage. I don't know if hitting the entire width matters, but I do suspect that it does, because hitting versus single targets is a little tricky. Oh, and the health of Smashers, or I'm sorry, the size of Smashers is so sufficient that they can just eat the oh, entire man. wave on you again, including the actual arc of the weapon itself. So you're using the regular heavy attack and the wave of damage. I know that we lost Toy Rockin' Out and all of our stacks damage. I just wanted to go for on it anyway. Again. On you again? Where is... Where are you keep getting them? I don't know. I'm just walking and they appear. <laughs> it just never gets old. Now, I should also add that I'm not really using this build as intended. I am oh, so focused on just one-hitting these smashers that I'm not even necessarily playing normally. Like, going up against a Smasher and hitting it five times and just attacking it normally is kind of what you're meant to be doing with this build. But the fact that it can one-shot is just gorgeous. Just gorgeous! <laughs> Look at that health! You cannot get a higher level regular target. Like, the only thing that has more health than that is a mini boss. And honestly, it didn't last all that long either. So I am just absolutely loving this. I'm a little happy that this second game has gone a bit better. We actually scrapped Please. most of the footage from our original Cat 4 mission because every Smasher I went against was just surviving too long. It wasn't showcasing the build that well. I know I don't have my shield right now, so... Trying to, I'm trying to like make excuses and temper expectations for the viewer, and then it died anyway. So, yeah, uh, that build, that game had a lot of enemies, oh, like the Smashers, just not surviving, or they were surviving, which was the problem, of course. And this game has clearly gone a lot better. So, yeah, hopefully that was enough for a video. Maybe I'll queue another game depending on my mood. Mm. I think we got enough. If you guys enjoyed this build, feel free to try it out. Thank you, AS407. I continue to fight against Eddie. I don't like using him. Having shield was almost never even 
a thing anyway. Uh, my shield was empty for a lot of those clips, and he insists that if you use the build right, you can keep your shield up, but I'm kind of team Whiteout Fiona. I know we're already using Toy Rock now, but Whiteout Fiona will smoothen out the amount of crits that we get when the team perk's not active, and Corrosive Strikes is interesting because Corrosive Strikes applies extra damage when you crit, but as AS47 pointed out, you usually aren't... Um, you're killing the enemies so fast that you aren't even getting Corrosive Strikes damage because she ticks like once every second over a period of time and they're already dead by then. So maybe Eddie and Ken are the way to go. I don't know. Arlie Niza would help you keep alive. So that's nice too. But regardless, whether or not this build is well-rounded, it obviously does the job. So thank you again to AS47. If anybody commenters have any other suggestions, leave them down below. I'll see you guys in the next one. And uh, thanks for watching. Hey, we're going to be talking about Whiteout Fiona today because she's an amazing hero. If you don't have her, you should grab her. And if you do have her, you should throw her in this build because in the lead, she ups the crit rating of swords, axes, and sides by a lot. And in support, it's still a good enough amount to where you don't even need a crit rating perk in some cases. I use her in pretty much every ninja build I showcase on my channel. And today is no different we're gonna be showcasing the stormblade build that i've shown before if you've seen that video before uh you uh you're in for a treat today and you know it if you haven't seen it you should check that out as well because that gets much further into the math of that build and it also has a spreadsheet associated with it showcasing why we use what we use but here's the build without any uh further explanation totally rocking out so we can crit more often fumble to activate totally rocking out battle beat to activate totally rocking out normally we would use corrosive strikes because she does a ton of damage it's a great support perk but i'm going to be recording and exploding death bomb mission today and i want to die less so i'm going to use bomb suit for armor that's just me patting myself that's not a recommended perk but you can use it if you also like to not die that often and monster smash is a recommended perk you want to use her no matter what you're doing death bomb or otherwise because that life leech scales with the amount of damage your weapon is doing which this is not a paleo luna build we are not just farming attack speed for paleo luna's buff where the weapon's barely doing anything no 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 no, no. you're gonna be doing a lot with those crit hits causing explosions because you're gonna be critting all the time that life leech will absolutely keep you alive and it's actually really impressive how well it does and then sorry and claws and support i think is the lesser option so for those of you who just watch my videos hit pause and then grab the loadout and leave you're gonna get kind of scammed right now because i think corrosive strikes will be a lot more useful than paleo luna in this build so we're gonna go with her now the weapon i have actually supercharged it since that video because this is one of my favorite loadouts a lot of my videos and my fun loadouts playlist are really really fun for like one video and then i probably don't run it again i use a lot of variety so for a loadout to be used as often as I've used the Stormblade, it needs to really be fun, and I supercharge it because it made sense to me. Double attack speed damage, it can only be energy damage, miss monster bosses, and of course, crit hits cause an explosion. That is the one thing we are farming in today's video, and uh, Archer's also running a similar build with the Steam Thrasher, so if you guys really want that Steam Thrasher video, comment down below. I've gotten the comment a bunch, I've been reluctant, but if you guys want to see it, if I could see a comment down below with over 200 likes, for me to use the Steam Thrasher in an upcoming video, I'll do it, all right? I'll finally make it happen. I'll I'll do that for you guys. If you want to see it, thumb up a comment and uh, we'll make it happen. For now, let's, uh, let's see how the Stormblade does. All right, so I'll be avoiding death bombs, but I, I wonder if the armor helped at all. It can't hurt to be tankier, right? It looks like we're still doing plenty of damage. Once Totally Rockin' Out's active, yeah, yeah, yeah. Once the ball gets rolling, it is really really strong that's why a big encampment like this is actually easier to deal with the normal like single target enemies single target is where this loadout kind of fails you don't do nearly as much to a single target as you do a crowd because when you are swinging a melee like this you can actually crit multiple times on multiple targets so like one swing can hit multiple enemies and each of them individually have a different chance to crit if you can explode while attacking multiple enemies it will kill all of those enemies in range if you can kill all of those enemies in range you can activate totally rocking out more often and you can heal yourself more often and it's just better you'll crit more often you'll do more damage you'll heal faster it is way better versus a crowd of enemies and when you're standing in the storm and taking lots of damage arlene Iza is in play to heal you as well that's why i say that she's surprisingly good because as you saw i i left that with almost full health all right archer pointed out a smasher for me to demonstrate this exact problem so against a single target or at least a couple here yeah i got a couple of lucky crits but you can see it doesn't really do that much uh it's gonna do more when there are enemies nearby but it'll do a lot less when it's just me and the smasher you can see it really really struggles i'm taking a bunch of damage i'm in the storm which isn't helping either there aren't that many enemies around to heal me and it's overall just a struggle bus so not the best weapon for single target damage but for crowds it excels all right one more clip of encampment before we get the mission started in normal scenarios this would be scary oh no a bunch of enemies around i'm scared but no it just activates totally rocking out heals us in the process makes everything die a lot more faster and you're just 
perfectly fine. You can also not feel uh, scared at all to use your abilities. The abilities on White Elf Fiona are actually really good. Dragon Slash, Throwing Star, and Smoke Bomb are all super, super strong. I'm more focused on showcasing the Stormblade today, but I'm going to try not to forget about those during the defense, as this is also sort of a White Elf Fiona showcase, as she is available in Hit the Road right now. So go grab her while you can. Now, let's do a little bit of trapping. Uh, so I want to be able to funnel the enemies towards me. With Exploding Death Bomb, that's not as easy, but I'm still going to do my very best because I want to have big crowds of enemies. As I've mentioned way too many times in this video, lots of enemies in one spot is very good for me. So I'm just going to try to funnel them towards this area right here or up here. I'm not going to have that much control. This is going to be a little bit tough, but that's okay. All of my teammates are on the game, on the ball, trying to help us not fail. I don't think there's really that much to do. The enemies are going to be spawning back here, running through this cave perhaps, so we can clean this up so we don't have as many things in the way. I would normally put floor freeze or something like that to stall them all and uh, build them up better, but it's exploding death bomb. So that would just delay the inevitable. I think that's really all we can do. So now that we got the lay of the land, let's start the mission and get her going. Now, I should mention that we're building out of metal intentionally. We do have metal corrosion. We do see that. That is something we are perfectly fine with, as normal enemies are actually what activates metal corrosion. This is what I'm talking about. Nice little dragon slash instantly gets the totally rocking out active, and we can just get right to murdering. So that is intentional, because normal enemies activate the metal corrosion, and big enemies won't. So smashers, mini bosses, or, uh, you know, miss monsters in general are the only things that will activate that. And most normal enemies should be dead by the time they get to our defense. Of course, we are not trapped over here, so it's really not that uh, not that good of a showcase, but you can imagine if we were trapping normally, this is more of a showcase video. Everybody in the game knows that I'm making a video. Normally, traps would um, be taking care of the regular enemies. Guys, I can't do anything to the Smashers. If you guys want to focus on them, that'd be great. Yeah, I'm going to just let them deal with that because I'm going to need to focus on the regular targets. Now, as I'm saying, we're, we're not worried about the metal corrosion. We should probably put some traps down activating battle beat with the traps is actually perfectly fine and uh getting getting totally rocking out active more often is, is very good because i believe i'm recording in a current bug version of the game where totally rocking out is not activating every time it should so it's not reactivating the team perk until it runs out so it has to run the full eight seconds of decaying crit chance uh, before it goes away. Technically, it's decaying crit rating. Crit rating works a little weird. Oh, I'll link the, uh, the, the, the chart for all the crit chance versus crit rating down below. But this is absolute mayhem. These smashers are just shredding this defense apart. And uh, we're actually holding up pretty well. I'm running out of enemies to kill here, which is severely impacting my ability to heal. And uh, there I go down. All right, I do believe it's high time to get a few more traps down. I'm not really going to use my brain here. We're just going to put down a couple of steel electric fields out of the way of the death bomb. A little dragon slash going in to weaken everything at once. Oh, my God. Oh, God, the exploding death bomb. I was interrupted by jumping oh out. God. I took damage while I was trying to jump. It couldn't get to safety. Okay, if somebody can heal me, I can adrenaline rush everybody else. There we go. Oh, oh, archer's out of range. That's not good. And they're rotating out here, which might be okay. A little dragon slash action is okay. All right, there we go. I'm gonna get ahead of this and just get some traps down. There we go. I'm not gonna block that tire trap. Just to soften up the enemies. There we go. Uh-huh, uh-huh. There we go. That should hopefully stave them off. Get away from that death bomb because dying is not good. You know, I was hoping the armor perk from... <laughs> from... What is his name, actually? Bomb Squad Kyle? I was hoping that would help me more than it is, but I'm so far... Uh, not seen any benefit considering this mission had too little defense. I have to say it once again. This is not a normally trapped mission. Typically, we would put more traps down, but this terrain was not only not very forgiving, but it was also set up for me to do as much damage as I could with the Stormblade. Unfortunately, though, the Stormblade does not perfectly enable me to solo a mission, so it's, uh, as you can see, not going perfectly well. But if we can get some traps down, hopefully we can get some defense in place here. Oh my gosh, I was trying to jump out of here. There we go. Come down here. This is where the enemies are rolling through a lot. We are losing so much health that we might end up getting a second game. If we fail this mission, we'll trap it a lot smoother and uh, hopefully get a better showing of this weapon. All right, having failed the last mission, we came correct. Noah and Jason are each running Nox or Power Base in the lead to get a nice base defense down. I put down a few traps. Most of our spawns are actually on this northeast side, so I put a nice row of tire traps just to take care of that. Lots of ceiling electric fields. We are not looking to fail again. In fact, I'm actually going to 
lose a little bit of visibility by connecting that, so hopefully the base keeps these walls alive. It's not a serious funnel, but this will at least move the enemies in certain directions. Then we got, again, more electric fields. We are now looking to fail again, and activating Totally Rockin' Out is something I'm happy to do. Got the walls nice and firmly defended here with the base fully maxed out, so let's hopefully actually succeed this mission. And not only is this better trapped, but it's a much more forgiving spawn location, which of course we can't decide, but this will hopefully give me a lot better of a flat area to defend. And with all these enemies out here, wall coming to me right here, this is going to be my favorite spot. So let's just get to it. Let's see this weapon do what it's best at. This is just great. This should, this could be an intro clip for the video, like just to play while I'm talking in the beginning, because this is what I believe is a much better showing of what this weapon's capable of. This, this is where the weapon really, really gets its, uh, its prestige. This is where I really enjoy using this build. I mentioned earlier in the video that there's no setup. I don't need wafers, I don't need coconuts, I just need to stand here and murder everything as it comes in. You can see my health is even going down, but it's going right back up because of all the enemies coming at me. That is absolutely keeping me in the fight. I'm still useless against smashers, but we gotta team it up here with Hot Shot, which is definitely doing enough. Although, if there are a lot of enemies nearby, killing a smasher on the side isn't too bad of a deal. We can drop a smoke bomb right here to take care of the Riot Husky. Like I said, using the abilities are, is not, not banned. <laughs> I'm obviously trying to showcase the weapon and the hero combo, but the abilities are very strong, so taking good use of them making good use of them and taking advantage of them is uh, definitely something you can do. At least it's not in nature season. Last season I uh, last season I was playing was a nature season and having no energy in my builds was not that satisfying. Although the current rage modifier in ventures takes away all your energy, so yeah. Easy to get around that by having a hero that gives you energy, but still annoying. I want to see. How well is my health doing? Yeah, these death bombs are doing like a third of my health, maybe a little more, which is definitely an upgrade because I feel like two death bombs would have killed me before the armor. I don't really know for sure. I haven't played with this exact team enough to know exactly. And that's the thing, you know, the different people that I play with changes my overall fort stats by a lot because different power level people will boost you by differing amounts. So I can't really say exactly how good ba uh, Bomb Squad Kyle would have been, but I don't know. I'll definitely be doing less damage with him in support, but staying alive is kind of nice. I talked about that in the beginning, though, so if you're looking to do the most damage possible, I advise against him, but uh, you can see this loadout is absolutely shredding. They barely touched my tire traps here. They only fired eight times, so I'm definitely happy with this. We got a bunch of teammates dying over here. That's okay. Where are the new enemies spawning? Looks like we got a bunch of throwing thoughts now. They're just sitting back. Here, let me go take care of them. There we go. Take care of that. Do that. Do that. Nice little dragon slash into the spawns, which is great because it gets the attention of these enemies. Stops them to turn towards me. I'm going to... I'm going to fly away from certain death back there, but it kills off all the easy enemies, and then it turns the fatties towards me with totally rocking out active so I can just clean them up. I love this build. More enemies down here just rolling down the hill. Uh, placement is very important. So I placed my tire traps facing up the hill. That way it staggered the enemies backwards. That's true for any placement for the tire traps. Tire traps and floor freeze work that way, where wherever you're facing, they will stagger the opposite direction. So if you want to perma stall a fatty with a floor freeze, just face the floor freeze away from where you want them to go and you'll be happy. You can see my health isn't updating in the bottom left when I pick up those fumble footballs. That's that totally rocking out glitch we were talking about earlier. It's only activating at the very end of Totally Rockin' Out, which is uh, kind of unfortunate, but that's just to say that this build is doing fantastic with bugged Totally Rockin' Out. It's significantly more reliable when the team perk is actually working functionally, which is not saying much because this has already been kicking ass. So <laughs> it's funny. It's like, hey, you know, all this absolute carnage that you've been enjoying on screen. Yeah, it's actually normally better than that. What? Yeah, that's crazy. So, it looks like our spawns have flipped into the storm, and this is where I can really demonstrate that healing power of Arlie Niza. Look at this. I'm standing in the storm, as, and as long as I avoid those death bombs, I'm basically just alive. It also destroys the beehives. So, when you have that explosion activating, that will break any beehives that are on the ground. Uh, I can't really illustrate that without any beehives, but they will get instantly cleared away as I'm exploding everything in front of me, which is a really, really nice perk. That means you're not standing on it. There's a beehive and it's gone. You see that? So that means I'm not just standing on beehives. I can actually get a lot more survivability by killing those. With any other normal melee build that's not exploding constantly, those beehives would most certainly kill you. So getting rid of them is a nice advantage. Of course, in this case, I did run out of enemies and eventually died. Ah, uh, back to my favorite spot. This corner is the dream position. Okay, I'm gonna adrenaline rush just to get back up to full health. There we go. Okay, yeah, propane. 
storm, beehives. Nurses don't really matter, but exploding death bomb. This is a very hostile location. Arlene Iza and Bomb Squad Kyle are just working together. I cannot believe I'm alive. As mentioned, with a normal melee build, you would be so dead right now. I praise the hell out of coconuts, but they're not invincible. Like, you would need to be eating coconuts constantly to stay alive in this madness. And I'm running out of enemies, so I'm almost going to die. But I just got a crowd of enemies in front of me right yeah, when I was about to die. Back up to full health. What do we got? Mini boss right on me. Okay, there we go. No, they're, they're, the entire defense was up. Okay. Well, I got a mini boss on me down here in front of a crowd of enemies, so I might try to take it out. I'm gonna crawl with them. I'm just following my my horde of victims. All right, here we go. I'm on it. I'm on it. So single target's not that impressive, but uh, yeah. When he was with the crowd of enemies, I would have done a lot more. But that damage pulse plus exploding death bomb is just insta killing me. Uh, a discharger's not gonna be the best trick tool for that job actually because the discharger does more damage to bigger enemies so a smasher is like the only kind of mini boss you want to use a discharger against we gotta get him out of there as soon as possible he's damage closing yep yep pot shot or wrath would be good so another bug that's in the game and detrimental to it's yeah, the game is the fact that damage pulse affects Defenses. So as we're doing damage and the mini boss is damage pulsing, that is not just damaging us, but it's damaging the objective's health. It should not be doing that. It's an absolute bug. If we fail this mission, I'm not going to blame us at all because that glitch is really annoying. Uh, obviously, I'm running a build that doesn't do too great against single targets, so I can't help as much. And the death bomb means I need to constantly be moving out of the way. Smashers are shredding apart our defense. I'm going to get this right here. I just want to reinforce all of our traps before they go away. There we go. Yep, just want to make sure they don't go anywhere. I don't know what to do right now. I think we're going to fail another mission, but I don't think this one's our fault. This seems unfair. Who cares about White of Fiona? Are we going to survive this mission? Oh, no. I think I'd have to stop using the Storm Blade because this build is not suited for the madness in front of me. Okay, yep, stay away from him. Dragon Slash. We have a teammate in the middle just auto-building. Is that you, Archer? Is that something else? I can't see the username. He's no, just spinning fire, in circles. The, the super annoying fly, fire zappers just hit me once and I die in two seconds. Yeah, this is... We're both using builds that are not suited for this. Oh, God. Oh, I switched to fair. Yeah, oh, I, I just jumped off the map, so I'm my own worst enemy right now. This is... This is embarrassing. Yep, glitched mini boss failed us the mission. So look at that! A fun 160 with not one, but two failed missions. One of those was definitely our fault. The second one, I... I'm going to blame the glitchiness of the game on that, but we saw what we needed to. This build is absolutely insane. You guys should absolutely try it out. I hope you have better luck in your mission. Subscribe if you're new. Twitch link down below if you ever want to be here for a live recording. It's pretty fun to hang out with me on stream, I think so. So, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one, and uh, have a nice day. <laughs> and then...